working without a concept and even more importantly working with reference right so um reference is obviously something that's really important for us as 3d artists um what when we work in on realistic things but also um sometimes people forget when we're working on something that's not realistic at all or that doesn't even exist and i want to go over how we can use reference, how we can uh, look for reference, how we can uh, gather reference, and how to, in the end, work on something that's creative, that has uh, a unique style or a unique, um, unique design, but it's, we don't need someone else to make a concept for us. Um, so I think we should start by, uh, yeah, looking at like how, how does it work in production, right? So um, we don't, if we look at a uh, uh, video game production, a lot of people always think, okay, you, you get a, a concept, then that goes to the 3D artist, and then that goes to an animator or to a level designer or whoever else might, might uh, use the actual model in the game. But um, a lot of the time, that's actually not possible. We can't make a concept for each little prop that's going to that's gonna sit in the corner somewhere. So a lot of the time, the 3D artists themselves will have to look at references or they will get some references and maybe be asked for... Uh, to look for some more to kind of support the the original idea, and um, that's why it's so important that we like that all of us are able to work with reference and um, handle it to to yeah well come up with our own designs or just to enhance something that we that we see in real life. So I think um, the best way to start is I can just um, show something that I have used in my own projects and how I have used reference. Um, so let's just share the screen. Okay, let me know if you can see it. Yeah, I can see it. Cool. Um, so I've done it a couple of different ways for different projects. Um, so if we look at, for example, this, this is a little bit of an older project of mine. Um, what I did here is I just pretty much went to Google and looked for the, the specific make of, uh, or the specific model of this, this uh, rifle um, and just downloaded anything I could find, right? That's, that's kind of the shotgun approach. You just um, throw a lot at the wall and see what sticks, and that can be good for a start um if you if you just want to find out as much as possible at, about something like a specific object um and what i found here is if you're looking uh, just as a tip for for guns and stuff um you can often find like the best reference on on auction websites especially if it's about older guns right um so i've just i just have it all in the folder here um and it's it works it's good i can i can look at specific things i'm like okay i want to make the lever and then I can just switch to each picture. I mean, I think that's that's all pretty, all pretty basic, all pretty clear. Um, I've I've tried to uh, maybe include all of the different things that I that I might need, um, but still, honestly, there's still a lot of stuff that that might be missing here. Um, one thing that I want to um, focus on already, even though this is more like the yeah the, like the basic example for uh, for us to start with, is that I still tried to find. Um, reference that is interesting right so even if like if you're making something that actually exists let's let's say this gun or or a fire hydrant or something like that um there's still something like there's still some ways that you can find to make it more interesting right so the most mundane object you can still somehow make more interesting artistically or even um, in the way it, it might work or something like that i mean you it depends on how much um how much freedom you have art direction wise uh, in the project you're working on or um or whatever it might be but still you usually have a little bit of freedom to to take some liberties with at least um some small details so if we look at um these references here you can see that maybe um you know this kind of wood is obviously like a replaced someone replaced the stock with uh, some new wood and it looks pretty boring it might it might be a cool thing for um, some kind of visual storytelling with this gun being like remade and um, parts being reused or something like that. But this wood in itself just looks super boring. So I might be looking um, more for something like this, right? Where we can have specific wear details, nice little scratches, all of that stuff. So I so I try to already be selective while I'm looking for reference. 
and i think that's something that um that you should definitely do like even even like i said here i kind of just took all of the pictures i could find especially because um on this specific rifle it's actually not that easy to find a lot of good reference but um even then you should try and, and look for something that you that you might want to incorporate so for example this i really liked because it had um like i i, I didn't want to have all one color metal in the end it just would look super bland no nice like breakup and, and and wear and tear so i intentionally looked for reference like this that um that i knew i could maybe use uh later on and and kind of combine with the other references which i think is is something that people should do a lot more often is combine different references uh either by doing like a an actual like overlaying them together in a in a, in photoshop or whatever or just in your brain um to be like okay maybe this wood is a look it looks a little bit too crazy like it's too too bright here and then too dark on the side i don't like it maybe it's too shiny but i really like the metal so um i can then maybe combine it with this wood and then i'll have the thing that i that, that i end up liking a lot right um a good way to do this i didn't do it for this project but i've, I've done for uh, something that i did a little bit more recently is use something like pure ref um which I don't know if you guys have uh, used or uh, even heard of it before, but it's a super, like, very basic software that you can just plop pictures into, plop images into, and add, like, little notes, and you can arrange them any way you want. So um, this is for my latest project uh, where I did um, a street in Tokyo, and I added uh, a vending machine because that was, like, from the reference I've gathered, I felt like that was something I needed in the to complete the, the picture, right? So... Um, what I like to do, and I, I see this, I don't see this enough with, with people that work with reference, is I like to separate it into specific things that I want from each reference. Um, especially, because that's, that's something that I'm really missing with the way I did, uh, I did this before, is I don't know like which reference I'm going to use for what, right? So I might have said in my head, okay, I really like this metal, I want to use this. I really like this magazine marking on here. Um, I want to use that, but there's no way to know. All these files are just, you know, they've got like random names that I just got from the from wherever I downloaded them. So what I like to do is separate them somehow like this. Um, for example, here we've got a couple of um, images just for the general shape and general um, like design choices. I, I mean, in, in this case, there's not a lot of shape to go around. It's pretty much just a big box. But we can already, um, you know, see like, okay, we we want like maybe little signs at the top. We'd like this gen general design with the thing at the bottom um, here. Like, I, I like to sometimes add little little notes as well, like standing on cinder blocks, because that's something I, I saw a lot. Is the the vending machines like stand on bricks or cinder blocks or something like that? So I really wanted to include that. So I, I marked it down for later, because that's that's something that's really important when you work in a studio as well. Is that you have to you have to think of a concept less uh in a way that maybe some people think of it as like a nice looking picture but it's a lot more a communication tool right so you're pretty much you could just write everything down but it would take longer and it's you can't you know you can you can look at a at an image quicker than you can read all of the the stuff that you might want to put in there so the same way it works with reference as well um maybe not as much when you're working on your own like i did for this project but it can definitely help especially if you have uh big breaks in between it so you can you kind of still know what you were thinking right so you don't forget all the all the cool things you, you were thinking up before um so here i've got shape uh details which is just like the way the the mechanism works for the uh, for paying and um yeah i i wanted to remind myself that this this is how it worked like you had the the lines of buttons for you can order stuff and then the glass in between and then just like some some branding stuff or well actually actually i guess this should be down here well it's like a i don't know <laughs> but yeah you can tell sometimes it can be hard to to actually categorize it in the right way but in this case it's only for me so i guess it doesn't matter just as much um and yeah here just a lot of branding reference um yeah just some 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 small stuff so that i don't forget they have like the blue lines and red lines for hot or cold drinks um so this is how i like to do it uh, in this case it wasn't necessary but what i think is really important with uh, other props can be something like a material um thing like a the material uh collection of references so that for example if you're working on um 
I don't know, like a medieval medieval cart. Um, you can have just pictures of the the shape of the cart that might be modern and like have completely uh, fresh wood and it doesn't look old or, or like weathered at all. But then you can have a separate image that just so shows the the uh, material. So you have like old wood with maybe like moss growing on it, right? So you don't. That's the thing. You the way that a concept would work is you would just take that. Um, take that reference image of the new card and like paint over it or you would paint a completely new card with the material that you want on it but in this case that's not we don't need that to get the point across right we just need okay we need the shape we need the material and we can kind of combine it in our heads especially because in this case it would be kind of two different steps in the workflow right we we, we work on the shape first and then we texture it later um so that's that's the way i like to work um and i think especially if you if you take the time to do this kind of stuff you might not need to do it later on because you can kind of do it in your head but even i really like to do th this kind of stuff even though i've done it loads of times just to get the idea straight in my head and i can yeah look at it in a month or two and i still know what i actually wanted instead of having a folder that's uh yeah something like this like what am i going to do with this i guess i can go through all of them and kind of separate them for what part of the car I want to look at or um, what aspect of the materials or whatever. But in the end, something like something like this um, is going to be a lot more helpful. Um, yeah, that was kind of like my first uh, thing that I wanted to, to, to say. Um, I hope you kind of understood what I was talking about. <laughs> and uh, I'd be interested to hear how, like, what, what is your... Um, relationship with reference how do you use reference do you just look look up stuff on google and don't even save it or do you how do you like to gather your reference and how do you like to arrange it and work with it um and obviously do you have any questions about what i just said um let's check the chat uh... Well, I'm just going to pitch in here, right? Um, yes. I got a question about like specific angles for references. Say for the gun, for example, you have a lot of different angles, but what if there's an angle that you can't find? What do you do with that? Yeah, that's tough. It's It, it can happen, especially with something like this, where it's, like I said, it's like a, it's an old gun. And then also annoying with this one is that there's like seven different versions. It was used by the Russians for a time and all that stuff. So you always have to find... The right version of it if you can't find an angle um in a like a, a good picture of an uh, of an angle what i like to do is sometimes um try and see if i can find a video they're usually um a lot less uh like uh, uh, they're a lot lower quality and they might get blurry when there's movement or stuff but just so you can get an idea <laughs> that um that that actually might might help you to you know sometimes you you don't need the whole angle to know exactly what's going on you just need that one little thing like well, how, how does this shape work you know how, how does it uh, go behind there or whatever uh, it might be so that can help um sometimes it can help to look up um like free 3d models that people lo uh, upload of stuff and you can look at another 3d model it, it might feel a bit weird but if there's like no other way that you are going to get the reference i guess that's uh, that's one way to do it um but usually you can find most of the angles by looking up um, websites that, that try to sell stuff, right? That's the, that's the main thing about auction websites is they want to give the buyer as much as, uh, information as possible. <clears throat> so usually they try and show it from um, all of the angles. But yeah, it, it, might, it might get pretty hard in, in some specific cases, right? Awesome. Uh... Thanks, man. I also heard Myra was good. Yeah, Myra's cool too. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm honestly so far. I'm like when I work on my own, I I just like pure pure F simply for the fact that it's. Uh, I mean, it's like so easy to use and it's super quick and all that stuff. It's really great. Um, how do you approach not infringing on iconic or pattern designs of things when modeling a generic prop? So, in if you're working in a studio environment. Um, usually you're going to have uh, a legal department that takes care of that so in let's say in the in the ideal way you should never be asked to make anything that might infringe on copyright so um you shouldn't have to worry about it but obviously you still need to 
So um, it's 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 an interesting topic. Obviously, you can use references from from any branded products because you're not actually like that's not actually what and what ends up being used. But making specific designs, I think it can be yeah very daunting uh, at the start, especially to look at um, okay what what kind of what kind of um, reference am I even allowed to use? Right? Am I am I stealing something right here? Um, first of all, you need to um, you need to look at um, what what are you going to use be using it for, right? If you're using it for a personal project, you're not planning on selling it. It's obviously a whole different story. You don't need to worry about it, um, as long as you don't, um, yeah, try try to sell any part of it and and make any money from it. Um, or I mean, I guess sometimes specific companies also uh, have an issue with with uh, their stuff being used in in, in certain environments. Um, in a production setting, like I said, it's 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 really a hard um a hard question to answer because it's it can be so convoluted and that's why you have a legal department for it um usually you just stay away from anything that um is too distinct right like if you like a specific part of a design then like try to try to combine it with something else the thing that i was talking uh, about earlier as well because in the end if you're just taking the reference 100% then you know, you're not you're not really even um, changing anything about it and making it more interesting, right? You're just taking it straight from the real world, which which might um, be what you want for some certain projects. But in that case, you would usually have some kind of uh, deal with that company if you're trying to copy something directly. Uh, oh, I've got a quick question. Um, okay. In a production environment, would you say you sort of uh, as a as a team, would you build up uh, like a, a a bunch of reference together, or is it more sort of an independent type thing you do? So it obviously it will depend from from studio to studio and from team to team. Um, it's not really something that um, that is done like actively together um, that you would like. I mean, I guess sit like sit at the same PC and look at reference together. That's not you're not you're not going to do that. But what you might do is um, yeah, look look for for uh, references independently or like split up the the um, the work so that you can kind of um, each look for a specific. I don't know. Like uh, we could even say like, oh, you look up the shape of of these. You look up the the branding and you look up the details, right? And then you can put it all together. Usually, though, this would be an effort that's made by by like art direction and concept art, and um, that would be something like you would gather a reference that can that that is kind of all enveloping for the whole project or for the whole um, art direction, and then you could um, like you wouldn't really make it a team effort to to look for references to uh, for specific props. Like that would usually be on the on like the level of the the lead or the the whoever is putting up like the, the tasks for all the people and you, you just get like one reference image and then you need to look for references on your own or sometimes you, you already get what's called the reference sheet that would look a little bit like this where you have like um, the specific things kind of uh, put together. I hope that answers your question. No, yeah, it did. Awesome. Like it's weird, yeah, because obviously uh, when you, you work alone a lot, uh, when you're like obviously uh, on your own. So, uh, yeah. yeah, it's just interesting to hear, like, as how a team dynamic, how it sort of changes and if it does. Yeah, I mean, especially important when you're doing stuff with a team, even though maybe you're, you're, not, you're not making a reference sheet for someone else, which I, I've done before. I've just done, like, especially when I was starting out, I just had to do, like, reference sheets for a week uh, at the, the previous studio that I was working at. Um, where obviously it's really, really important that you that you get your point across. Like I said earlier, it's all about communicating um, the visual language or, or the, the details that you want to have in your final product. But also if you're working on something on your own and you're just putting references together for yourself in a studio environment, you should still try and make everything as clear as possible. Uh, it might not be the same thing like that you, that you don't work on it for a month. Like if you're putting your, excuse me, your personal project to the side for a month, but it might just be that you you get sick and someone else needs to finish the prop, right? And then they they need to have all of it, just obviously like all in one place, right? In, in one PRF, in one Miro board, whatever it uh, it might be. 
That's cool. I do, and I've never never thought of, thought of it like that. Uh, no. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I just wanna um, I just wanna uh, shout out what, what Timothy said as well. So really, anyone, just speak up. Um, that's what I'm here for. I'm I'm here for ask, uh, for uh, for answering questions, and um, I think that's also gonna be the most productive way of doing this. Um, I've got a couple of things that I want to talk about um, that I think are important. But I think the best way to do this is um, to kind of, uh, yeah, see what your what your burning questions are, and then maybe we can apply it to more of a broader uh, thing as well. So so you can all get something from it, right? Uh, how long do we tend to spend uh, gathering reference? I mean, it highly depends on if you're looking at something that's a very like minor thing that's going to be standing in a corner somewhere just some some random prop or if you're gathering reference for a big building that's going to be like the main focus of your scene um or of your your level in a production setting so it, it it definitely highly depends um i've done i've done reference sheets in half an hour uh, just thrown together for for something where i knew it, it didn't have to be the most uh amazing thing um but then well if you if you don't take the time to look to together the references, uh, then yeah, it won't look uh, most amazingly. Um, but yeah, that's just you know you have to kind of uh, balance your time there, I guess. But if you're if you're looking for references, uh, you know sometimes you're you're not looking for reference for a specific prop or building, but you're doing something more in in, in line with like art direction, where you look for designs that are going to be repeated throughout your 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 game or your level or uh, your project then it can make sense to spend a couple days on, on just gathering ref references, finding out more about how um, stuff is produced. Like that's, um, that's something I found with, um, with props, with guns, uh, all of that stuff. For, for me personally, it's, it's really important to find out how stuff is made because that will help you later down the road, right? You, you can understand, okay, this part connects with this and this is bolted together and, and it all, it will look logically uh later to to anyone that looks upon it right it's it, it doesn't have any weird things that are just kind of that feel like they're glued together but they're made out of metal and you always have like logical connections between stuff or you can even have uh things like um if, if especially on guns if parts are like milled or stamped you can have uh, marks of that later on in the in your high poly or in your texture so looking at stuff like that i feel uh, is, is is really cool as well just want to Yeah, if we don't have any more questions about this part, then I'm just going to keep going a bit. Um, well, I think... Yeah. Oh, I have one, if you don't mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go, go ahead, go ahead, please. Um, in production, where we all know that time is a little bit on the, on the short side, would you maybe spend a little bit more time looking for reference for a prop or something that maybe is a little bit more simplified just to suit just to like um save you some time on the actual 3d part down the line just as like a bit of a time saver that's actually a great question um yeah um depending on on what stage of production you're in that can definitely be something that that you might want to look out for right i mean it could be part of your art direction that you you want to simplify things or that you that you want to have a lot of detail so it might not you might not be able to make that decision but yes if if um i always like the the example of a fire extinguisher or something like that right you can because you can think of a fire extinguisher in a lot of different ways like a, a normal one or like a sci-fi one or one that has a lot of cool little stickers on it or one that's just very basic and um that's the thing if you have the time you might want to make it really look really cool and unique, but also then you have to think about how it's going to be used in the level. Um, if it's going to be repeated a lot, you don't want to make it too unique. Or like you said, you might want to just get a simple, nice, nice and simple reference <clears throat> that you know it's gonna it's gonna be very basic to do. You don't need to, I don't know, model all the little um, flaps and things that you need to like, um, like the little safety pins and whatever. Maybe you could find a design that works without it, and you can save some time on that if it works with. The other aspects of like art direction and stuff that's um yeah that can be that can be done 100 percent 
Um, maybe just to follow up on that a little bit quickly, um, would that apply to, in your opinion, stuff like level of detail? Like, so for example, with like our texel density limits and stuff like that, we can only see up to a certain distance, uh, like closeness wise. So would you sort of stay away to a certain extent from references that were like at a, at a micro level? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, um, that's again it's always hard to give an absolute answer just because every project is so different but yes you should always follow things that you have um like that are specific rules that you have for each project obviously you can if you follow them while looking for reference you'll save yourself a lot of time down the line so um if i don't know we we have a stylized project um and they don't ever want stuff that's too flimsy, right? Because they want everything to be like blobby and and uh, and, and and colorful and and I don't know, cartoonish. Um, then, if you're if you're looking for references and you can find a lot of small little details, obviously, yeah, you 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 don't want to you don't want to look for that kind of reference. You want to maybe get inspired by that reference, and you can you can still save this reference and put down. I like the general idea of this, but we might have to simplify it or you can you can then add another picture of and and do something like I like this but we could maybe morph it more into something that that has this general look but it still keeps the silhouette right so this is that's exactly what this is for um separating these references to say I like this shape but I don't like the details on this I like these details whatever um I think um I think that that can help you a lot with this and then um Kind of um, together with that question as well. If, if we're actually talking about actual uh, level of detail um, from like a technical perspective, you can always think about the technical aspects of your your prop later on. And um, the more you the more thought you put into gathering your references and thinking about okay, are we even going to be able to do this technically? Right? Like if I choose this reference, are we going to able to make it happen? Because this has so many details that. Or this this has such a such a um, like a unique silhouette that we, we we will need so many triangles to to make this work. Then you you should probably stay away from this reference as well, right? So that's um, that's something that you should take the time and and and, and think about uh, beforehand as well. That's uh, yeah, a good question. Awesome, thanks, man. You. Um, yeah. I also have another question. Um, yes, this is about how far you go down the rabbit hole of finding references. Because I often find that there's a lot of good stuff the deeper down you go, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so, I don't know, you find this really obscure blog that has like a ton of, I'm talking about environments, right? Like a ton of interesting stuff happening that you could maybe incorporate. Um, but you don't, you don't often find those resources. Like in the in the first, the first of couple of searches, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. when when do you stop? That's so. A lot of the time, it can feel very. Uh, it, can, it can feel very hard if you're looking for uh, something very specific, um, and you're just not finding what you're looking for. And um, I've I've had it a lot of times where where I've had a similar experience to what you've described, where I you you find of you kind of find so to speak like the the gold the, the gold mine right you you just and suddenly you 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 stumble upon that one yeah blog or or little forum post from 7 years ago and there's just an an amazing amount of um images in there what i like to do is if i find um one picture that i like you can um you can click on it in google and then it'll it'll show up on the right side and it'll show you pictures that are similar so sometimes, you know, if you have one thing that kind of shows what you like, you can you can keep going down that specific road until you find more that's like it. Um, when to stop is, <laughs> that's always going to be a hard question. Um, I think you should stop when you feel like you've got enough things to get your point across, right? So in this case, I could have probably stopped earlier even because, you know, I don't need a lot of details for the shape. I could have maybe just gotten this one and it would have been fine, but I wanted to have this here just in case that I can remember that I want to have, let's say, yeah, the, the cinder blocks or I, I like all of these designs and I might want to add something like that. So 
you shouldn't spend too much time on it if you if you're not planning on putting that much time into making it right so if, if you're working on something that's very very small it's going to be done pretty quickly and it's going to be like a, just a couple of pixels on your screen then you know you shouldn't you shouldn't take that much time you should probably just get a couple of reference images and be done um but yeah if you if you're let's say let's take the example of uh, of this gun I stopped when I kind of had the feeling that I could make the whole thing with like pretty much certain, like with a good amount of certainty that I would get all the details right. So um, I I had a lot of, uh, I think I think it was with, with this whole part, I had a lot of um, difficulty finding this at first, the whole um, repeating like lever mechanism and how, how the whole... Um, uh, I'm not that much of a gun expert, uh, unfortunately, but yeah, like the whole trigger group kind of uh, falls down, all that stuff. Um, and yeah, you just you you get more specific with your with what you're looking for, and um, sometimes it makes sense to go to some specific websites already and look. Uh, like instead of googling, you can like sometimes I even I even use uh, specific like Reddit groups or something like that for to look for references. Um, especially actually with my with my Japanese scene that helped me a lot with uh, with um, translations and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, it's obviously you don't need to go until you have um, like a, a full a hard drive full of reference. Um, but yeah, just go until you have like in this case, it was really important to me that I would get something that's almost uh, orthographic that I could use as like a side view so I could line up my um, my mesh ball modeling and then i just needed pretty much all of the angles at least once so i could know this is what the this is what the adjustable uh rear sight looks like or this is what the i don't think i actually made one but like the the sling mount or something like that um and then if you have like if i have this angle obviously it's going to help uh, if i have it uh, a couple more times just to get to know what are the most, um, like I can maybe see what is the most um, uh, common damages that you would have on this kind of uh, weapon. Like, okay, you could see the scratches right here or something like that, that, that are maybe repeating in both of them. Uh, like you can have the wear here. But in the end, to actually make the model, all you need is everything kind of once. And then you can, you can uh, sort of put the stuff together from from the other references that you have as well but especially for this for example i really wanted to get this right so i tried to get it in like several different um uh phases of being being opened um which was yeah like this one this one is fully opened with the with the bolt uh back as well um yeah that that would be my 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 answer for that um does that does that answer your question timothy yeah yeah it does um it's always interesting to hear how other artists tackle this, right? Because I remember when I was starting out, just like you said, the hard drive sold the references. And it was just like, I don't even use like 15% of this. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. Like in the end, you're a lot of the time, you're just going to focus on one one reference in the end to get your like your material definition. Like that was, I think, um, I think I, I looked a lot at this one and then also the magazine actually because i really like this uh these rougher bits because they because they get, get um give a little, nice little bit of variation so yeah th this is the type of stuff that i look for as well it's not just details as in uh, model details or um or like crazy stuff like this but just a little uh, roughness variations that i can i feel like okay i want to include this in, in my thing as well or I, I really like this little detail even though you never actually see it in my model because uh, I didn't have an angle <laughs> that's like this, but it's, I still like having it. Um, you can't have too many. I mean, if you can and you can't, right? So there is no harm in having too many um, until there is. It's it's really hard to say. Like if you have so many that you that you can't find the ones you actually want to use, then I'd say you have too many. But if you just have them and you 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 just want to 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 look at them to make sure that you don't make any mistakes because you want to replicate something perfectly, then yeah, uh, get as many as you can. Like this is, I would say this is a, a lot of reference. Um, 
I need more reference for this just because I'm I'm not a car guy and I wanted to uh, make a car for the first time, like a realistic one. So I tried to get a lot of reference. This is probably still not going to be enough. I'm still like, that's the thing. You, you always have to think of it as like a, like a pure F or something like this is a living document, right? So if you're working on um, the, the coin mechanism and then you realize, oh, wait, I, I have all of this, but I still need, I don't know. I still don't know how, how this part works. Is this the, do we put uh, uh, bills in here or do we put your card in here? I don't know. You know, like, and then you might have to look for more reference and add to it. Um, that's always a possibility. A lot of that time reference comes once you have the project in mind and as it's ready. Mm. Ooh, that's, I mean, that's a lot of, uh, that's a big question um, about like, it's it's a very broad question, I would say, from Ryan. Uh, I'll just, um, just for anyone who's missed it. Uh, the question is, a lot of the time reference comes once you have the project in mind and an asset list ready. When doing personal projects, how do you settle on a project and what are the basis of a successful project? So I guess how I would answer this is you, I mean, settling on a project, I'm, I'm assuming we are already saying that we, we know kind of what we want to do. Um, if you like, let's say I wanted to, like, I want to make a Tokyo street, right? That was my, my goal. Um, pull this up here so you know, you guys know what I'm uh, talking about. Um, nope, not this, this. Um, no, come on. There you go. Um, and obviously with the Tokyo street, you can do a number of different things, but, um, and then you kind of have to, like you said, you have to settle and decide on what you want to make. And um, in my case, it was actually, well, it was reference that helped me decide this. So what I did for this uh, project specifically was I used Google Street View for reference. So um, if we just go here, I've got like my little Tokyo thing. And a lot of these are just Google Maps, um, like markers. Um, so if you look at this, for example, you can already see kind of the way I've worked. So I've, I've just, I saw this little um, garage door with the, with the little roof above it. And I really liked it, but I wanted to make it a little bit more alive and maybe cartoonish, a little bit more stylized the way my scene was. So what I ended up doing is I, I kind of took the same, pretty much the exact same design. It has like the little, the little handles at the bottom. I made them a little bit bigger and a little bit more yellow but it has the same ones. It just, it's bent a little bit. The silhouette's broken up. You know, I think, I hope that this helps you with, um, with kind of understanding what I mean when, when I say making things a little bit more interesting. Um, and actually half of the scene, you're going to laugh uh, if you, when you look at this, this stuff, it's all in like this little corner of Tokyo. Um, so this house is essentially the same house. It's, it's got three stories instead of two. And um, it's got a little bit of a different, um, like I think the front door is uh, is over here instead of over here, how is it, how it is in my thing, but it's essentially the same, um, the same like floor plan, um, just a little bit shorter. So that's what I like to do um, for, or that's it's, uh, essentially for for this project is what I like to do is because I wanted to capture a very specific part of uh, Tokyo's kind of. Um, vibe i guess is what you call it so i try to focus on a very little corner of tokyo with my reference gathering so because i i've never been to tokyo i don't you know i i can't really um talk too much about it but i know that if you if you said i want to make a, a scene in berlin and you just took random references from different places in berlin it wouldn't probably end up looking like berlin because there's so many different aspects to all of the different part of, parts of the city and you're just going to end up with something that doesn't look like any of them. So uh, I tried to focus on this specific part to, to get it right. So yeah, if you look at this, um, this thing, uh, all I did is I, I, I pretty much took the branding, removed all of the, the references to the, to the actual brand, and um, changed up the text a bit. But yeah, that was, like, that's, that's how, I, how I handled getting this, my, my main project settled. And what I what, like my scope as well, right? Is I looked at references and I saw, okay, I like I like having one of this like the small building in the middle, 
and then one that has more of like a shop in it with a little bit more stuff going on and then one residential building and um then i looked at you know stuff like um having uh, maybe this isn't the best place i think it was over here like it's funny i already like i feel like i can kind of navigate these streets a little bit um yeah so this for example is something that i really liked but don't go past it is these little corners that are almost like a, a garden out on the street assume i'm assuming that it's because they don't have gardens themselves because they don't have that much space so they end up having it, them like on the side of the road i really like this so i really wanted to include this in my in my scene as well so that's that's kind of how i pr approach that um does this answer your uh your question ryan kind of how to how i approach more like the general gathering of references for a project I think it's interesting that he mentioned specifically the basis of a successful project. I mean, yeah, it's. So, I mean, there is, we can go into a lot more um, detail on this, right? And we will we'll end up talking about a lot more uh, than just references, but but um, mm -hmm. a lot of technical aspects as well. And um, I don't know how far we we want to go into that, but. Um, a lot of the time, the basis of a success, successful project is taking the time to plan it. And that a lot of the time involves, uh, involves a lot of reference or uh, mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, some people like to do it. I'm, I'm not personally a big fan just because I, I don't like drawing on a uh, drawing pad as much. But a lot of people like um, doing overpaints, putting together their references and, and then painting over them to kind of get an idea. Uh, sometimes I even do it just to get like something out of my brain um the the quickest and best way possible but um there's a lot of ways to to do this this planning phase and to hopefully kind of pave your way for later on so that you can move on in the most efficient way and uh, get stuff done uh, do to do build my toys being so fast. um oh okay i mean i guess that's a yeah you you have to understand that from 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 where Timothy and I are coming from I think all of the all of the portfolio pieces are something that we want to do um I hope I uh, I'm speaking for you there as well Timothy it's it's less about making something that that's successful just because we we don't have the necess uh, the necessity to create something that will get us a job because we already have one kind of uh, kind of thing right um but I, I would say in the end, it's it's often not even there that big of the oh, Jesus that big of a difference, because if you make something that you want to make, you'll put more effort into it, you'll put more time and and uh, and just like hard into it, and it's going to be more successful. I mean, there's a lot of different ways uh, how to um, how to categorize uh, and define successful for a personal project, but I would say that usually if you actually like what you're doing. The end result is going to be a lot better. So, yeah. Where's the references of things? Okay, this is yeah. Um, this is cool. I, I like uh, Leon's question uh, as well. Um, oh wait, no, uh, it was it was Joseph's. But I also like Leon's. I like all of the questions <laughs> so far. I'm really <laughs> happy that you guys are that you guys are uh, asking a lot of questions because, like I said, I think that's what's gonna. Uh, probably help the most people out um so let's go through them let's go through them uh, one by one so uh, 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 let's go for leon's first sorry uh, you're looking for a yeah um I'll, I'll just read the whole question just so everyone uh, knows again for the video as well when you're looking for your initial references do you also keep in mind or look for references assets that you would later use in the texturing process like research the wood grain gather something that you would turn into an alpha or do you do that in a separate hall? So um, I kind of touched upon it. Uh, maybe that, that, that was what you were talking about when you said you were had to leave the desk. But I like to do it in this phase. Um, so I would, like I said, it's, it's a little bit hard for this one just because there's not a lot of stuff going on with the material here. But um, if this was made out of wood, I would go for just like another note over here and say material definition or something like that and then i'd have you could even have like under points of that of like 
with base material, weathering, stuff like that. And then I would have, I would literally look up, like you said, like wood grain or painted metal or scratched brushed metal or something like that. And you can have all of this in here already. So like you said, you, you don't have to think about it later in the texturing process. Um, like the, the whole thing about creating an alpha of of um, out of images you got on Google, that's also like that's something you you gotta be careful with, right? Uh, if you're you, if you're making a, a person project, that's a different story. But um, usually, yeah, you can like you can use a reference, and then you can create your own alpha having that reference in mind. But obviously, it's a whole different story if you actually take the the picture itself and make something out of it, right? Um, cool. So. Uh... See, I hope that answers your question, Leon. Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, do you have any advice for or for references of things that either don't exist or haven't existed for a long time, and so are hard to find? A Roman catapult or a medieval construction site? Yeah, this is uh, a great question. This is something that <laughs> I think a lot of people, including me, uh, have struggled with. Um, it can go either way, right? It can go um, to something like a Roman catapult or a medieval construction site that's, that, that hasn't existed for a while or something like a spaceship. Um, well, I mean, there is spaceships that exist, but we're not in the, you know, like the sci-fi Star Wars kind of way. Um, I think it's really important to, um, to look into, well, first of all, you have to, you have to think, you have to define what, what you're making, right? If, you, if, if you're making something that doesn't exist, because it doesn't exist anymore, but you still want to recreate it uh, faithfully. Um, making a catapult um, would mean that you that you want to look at historical references of um, either, like if there is, I mean, obviously there's not going to be any photos, but there might be photos of recreations of a catapult. There might be original like drawings from back in the day that you might be able to find somewhere. Um, or just written descriptions sometimes, like about um, about uh, the mechanisms, how they might work. Um, but then sometimes you're not you're trying to make something that doesn't exist anymore, but you're not trying to make it realistically, right? You're not trying to faithfully recreate a Roman catapult, but you want to make something that just needs to look like a catapult so that people understand that it's a catapult, right? If you're Let's say if you're working on a on like a mobile game and you don't have a lot of screen space that you can work with, you just want to make something look like a most generic catapult, <laughs> you know, like that. That's the thing. You it's, it, that's obviously with that applies to everything, but um, that's something you have to think about. Um, but yeah, I would I would if we're talking about uh, recreating something um, in a realistic fashion, then that's where I would go. Is um, is uh, yeah, pretty much like historical resources for that. Um, recreations a lot of the time um can be pretty pretty faithful but there you really have to check your um sources right like because you can land on a historical website of a museum but you could also just land on someone's blog that likes making stuff and he built something that he thinks looks like a medieval catapult but isn't that all so you really have to make sure that you find something that fits what you're looking for um and then for something that um, that doesn't exist because it doesn't exist yet, um, I'd look at stuff that does exist and how you can adapt it, right? So if you're looking at, yeah, we were talking about a fire extinguisher. You, you, we need a sci-fi fire extinguisher, right? You can, then usually it makes sense to do something um, like an overpaint because you are moving away from stuff that, that, that really does exist. But if you're just talking about working for yourself you can yeah look at references of sci-fi that already is, exists even though i i do have to say be careful with that not because of copyright infringement but just because you know sometimes we like to use instead of instead of looking at the newest technological developments we have um to use those as a basis for sci-fi we tend to look towards like 90s and 2000s uh sci-fi right so we're looking we're kind of looking towards the past when trying to find a design for the future if that makes sense um 
so I would if if yeah if I was looking at a um a fire extinguisher and how to make try to make it sci-fi, I would look at what does the newest <laughs> fire extinguisher that just came out or that people are working on now look like, and then I might look at what does the newest modern motorcycle look like, right? And then I can kind of see what kind of shape language they're using, and then maybe I can extrapolate some of that towards something that might look really cool in sci-fi and <laughs> work as a fire extinguisher. I, I know this is a very basic. Um, basic example, but I think it, it hopefully gets the point across. Um, I hope uh, that answers your question, Joseph. Um, okay, I have to, I have to see which, uh, which I've already talked about. You really enjoying it? That, that, that's great, Santiago. Uh, makes me happy to hear. Okay. Do you ever photo bash? So, um, do I ever photo bash references uh, together yourself, or do you do it in your head, kind of while working in three? Um, I personally don't do it very often. I've done it in the past, especially if I need to show it to someone else, right? If I'm if I'm gonna have a basic, um, like all of these props in here are actually quite basic. Um, they just you know it's kind of them, them all coming together is what what um, what makes the whole scene. But none of these props, except for maybe the vending machine, actually has uh, like a ton of um, a ton of uh, detail. Um, but yeah, if um, I don't know if I have a, like an amazing example here. Um, but honestly, with I mean, even with the with the um, with the building right here. So for this one, I used uh, the this. Um, little canopy with the with the garage door um right here and then i hope i can find it like here you can already tell i should have named all of these but i didn't which meant that i uh, had to do what i'm doing right now which is like searching through the references way too much um which yeah you can you can learn from my mistakes there <laughs> definitely but yeah so for example i kind of photo bashed this in my head uh, i didn't actually do it um but I, I kind of put this together in my head, right? I want this garage door, and then I want I like these tiles with the blue at the bottom. So that's what I ended up doing for this house. As I have the, uh, you yeah, you can see it kind of there with the the blue at the bottom with the tiles above it, and then this. And then I think there's another reference um, that's got yeah that has this little window thing with the with the um, roof tiles that are kind of um, layered above each other, and that's what I'm that's what I'm kind of doing with the with the window here. So I don't personally photo bash them together, but that's purely personal preference. I just don't like doing it because um, sometimes I feel like if I, if I photo bash it together, then I'm losing the rest of the reference. So I'm losing the context, right? So it can be helpful to know that in, in, in what kind of um, way, like this, this um, for example, this, this thing is attached, right? So if I just took this and plopped it onto my other reference, then I might not be able to tell exactly um, how this was how this was attached or how this was used and whatever. So I like to keep it separate, but that's purely personal preference. Um, okay, I hope that answers it, Cairo. Can I ask a quick question? Yes, go ahead, please. What like you you've obviously like, taken parts of the Tokyo like a certain area you said and just made your own street from it essentially mm -hmm. what made you do that instead of like just going to street view and like doing this street you see like yep. um, what made you want to like is it just so you could compose like a sort of scene and add all the same elements or mm -hmm. so yeah that's uh, another great question um and that's exactly why i did it is um i i was looking around and i i saw a lot of things that i really liked um but for example, making you know even this house, I like um, the uh, I really like this gate and all that stuff. I, I like the the plants in the corner. Um, but something that I didn't like, for example, is this uh, wall. Not because it it doesn't look great. I mean that's that's arguable uh, if it looks good or not. But because this is like um, I don't know what this is actually called. But this is almost like a tiling uh, material. Like it it isn't actually bricks, right? You can see that there's like lines in it the way it's laid. Um, this is like a uh, like a covering for the wall to make it look as if it had had bricks in it, 
And this kind of stuff is really hard to recreate in 3D because this looks like a bad tiling texture. And <laughs> if you make it in 3D, it just looks like, a, like you did something wrong, even though it looks like this in real life. You know what I mean? So I actually chose to not use what was actually in, the, in, the, in reality there because I knew it was going to be hard to make it in 3D because uh, it, it was always going to look as if it was just bad CGI, right? Um, yeah. So, so you that's basically just that's chose that's all the aesthetically pleasing parts and made that an airstrip? Yeah, yeah. And then... Um, yeah, that's fair. So yeah, this, this road was, you know, it was nice, but it was kind of boring. So I, I, I took this instead with the green, um, green like sidewalk situation on it. And, and I, I really preferred that a lot um, to add some color as well. And then, yeah, sometimes there was just stuff that um, either was not going to be feasible um, from a scope perspective, because I knew, like, um, I couldn't, I don't know, I, I, I just wasn't going to be able to make a car. I played with the idea in my head a lot, but it, it just, it wasn't going to work. I wasn't going to be able to, to just make a whole car for this, for this scene that was going to take up only a little bit of space on the screen. Um, so that was out, right? And then if I'm going to make this, why would I make this without the car in it? Then it only looks boring, right? So I'm, you know, and that's that's how I ended up kind of going with where, like, with what I wanted to, to or without what, what, Jesus, with what I ended up doing. So, for example, yeah, I really like this material here because it's kind of, um, kind of a blank slate that you can add stuff on top of, like the, the wires, the cables, the AC, the little vents, all that stuff, um, and um. But yeah, like it, it, I, I just took what I liked from it and left the rest behind, right? So exactly kind of what you, what you touched upon is I, I pick and choose the stuff that I feel looks best. Um, obviously, you could have done something that was just one specific road, but you would have had to find the perfect unicorn road um, that you want to make. And then, um, you know, sometimes it can be hard to then, uh, if, you're, if you're focusing on that specific road, then maybe you only have that. Uh, one reference and you're also you have to be faithful to it right if you're trying to recreate it perfectly and that's not what i was trying to do i was trying to make my own thing and kind of um give it my own little twist right my, my own little thing i think uh on the on the original uh, building uh that, that this was based on there wasn't any bricks down here but i just liked the idea of having the bricks down here as well so i added them so I, it you don't need to be obviously it depends on what you're making it for if you have to follow some kind of uh, art direction rules or any other kind of rules. But in this case, I was kind of trying to trying to just have my own little fun with it so I could implement whatever I, I like personally, and that's what I ended up doing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I think a lot of the time I get stuck with uh, trying to make it like the actual area and rather mm -hmm. than like, cherry-picking the best part, so that's interesting. Yeah, I've it's 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 i just i can just repeat it it's obviously important that you that you do whatever you need like the for the need of your uh project like if if you have a class assignment or you have to do something at work that, where you say where you're told okay you have to recreate this 100 percent accurately sure you can't you can't have take those liberties but especially if you're working on a personal project i can just uh recommend this to everyone because you're going to end up having a lot more fun if you're making stuff you know that looks really cool instead of the stuff that just looks like on the picture and you don't let yourself have any fun with it. But also I feel like you're, you'll learn a lot just because you understand what makes things look interesting and what's the, what's the stuff that makes these like things feel unique or maybe what makes this look boring and how can I change this? Yeah, that's a good point. Thanks for answering. Very welcome. Um, Using a piece of concept art as the basis for your environment, how do you find the right balance between being faithful to the reference versus making it work as a 3D environment? Well, this is this can be hard, especially if you get a concept that might not like that has some weird stuff in it that you might not be able to understand the first time you look at it. Um, usually, if you if you like if you if you if you're handed concept art, um, I feel like the first step should be to take a good look at it and not start working on it right away. You should take a look and um, 
and see does this work does is, is this going to work in 3d can we can we do this you know maybe even if you're working on uh if this is at your workplace you might want to talk to uh the technical artists about hey is this actually feasible can we have all these cool little details in here um so you might have to you might have to actually change some stuff but in a production uh environment all of those changes should ideally be um like you should have a talk with the concept artist about them, right? You shouldn't just make them, and then in the end you'll have a three D uh, object that looks nothing like the, the concept or or, or a three D environment. Um, so it's definitely worth it to to take a look and kind of not question it, but more um, to to um, what's the best way to to say it? I don't know. I don't. I can't think of the English word, but just you know, give it a good look and. Um, and find out what what you might want to or might have to change down the line. So, what I would say is answering all of the questions from the get go, and then you can you can make the adjustments uh, while you're working on when you have kind of nailed down what is important to keep and what could be changed in the future. Uh, yeah, did that did I answer your question, Jack? Yeah, it did. Um, yeah, because I sort of. Uh... That's sort of what the project I'm working on now. And uh, mm -hmm. that was one of the sort of lessons I sort of had to learn as I was doing it. Because from the offset, I was sort of like, oh, I'm going to make this piece and it's, it's going to be faithful, like completely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I quickly learned that as you work through like the environment and you like, you look at like stuff in the background for example like it's a lot of implied detail and not fully developed so when yeah, you're trying exactly. to translate that to 3d it's it's quite hard and i i'd quite uh yeah i started to figure out like what how i how i could uh solve that and like you say a lot of uh you saw that to answer your own questions yeah uh, in a way that's, that's the thing like we 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 talked about how concepts are essentially well they're a communication tool but sometimes there will be miscommunication or just um stuff that just the same way when we talk to each other there can be stuff that could be interpreted in, in many different ways so that's why when you create a reference sheet or a concept for someone else that's something you have to think about but also when you receive one right you have to think about is am i interpreting this the right way Maybe if if not, like, or if you if you have doubts, then you should talk to the person that that created it for you. Um, or if you were working on a concept from the internet, you know, you can then kind of consult yourself and be like, do I actually want to do it like it is in the concept, or should I change it up a little bit? Maybe, you know, I thought about this. Actually, in the end, I don't think I like the way it's done here. I actually would like this to be a different color or to be a different shape. And um, yeah, you kind of have to be um, have to be flexible in that way if you can be, right? Depending on the environment that you're in. Uh, yes. I just want to, uh, like, say that again. Thanks for all of the questions. Uh, really, really good stuff. Um, I really I really like this um, kind of back and forth that we've got going on here. Um, Ovi, what were some of your challenges in dealing with composition and some notes to keep in mind? I can tell yours is kind of more straightforward, but it's packed with a lot of detail. Yeah. Um, composition is something that I still find very hard. Because um, it, like, I think composition is something that people a lot of the time feel like it, like, comes naturally to them just because they have something in their head. But it doesn't mean that they can actually end up getting it out, like, out on on paper if you're making a concept or into into the, the engine if you're doing like a 3d block out so <sighs> composition especially for this scene it's kind of hard to give an exact um answer to this just because this actually started as um kind of an r d project i uh, like all of this started with just the the roof material that i i just wanted to do it as like a material thing material um uh what do you call it test uh study material study um and then it developed into okay i'm just gonna make one house like a little diorama and then it kind of grew from there and i started adding stuff to it obviously i tried having some kind of um 
composition in there that that would look um, good together and, and and work with different shots. So what I like to do is I just had uh, I think I showed it to Timothy. I had like twenty cameras in this scene just from the start. So I every time I saw an angle that I liked, I put a camera there for later, and so I could tweak it later on and maybe um, you know have it, have it saved for myself. So I can uh, I can kind of get this composition on the fly because I personally didn't have the time to plan it out fully because it was very it was very much like a snowballing project that started growing and growing from uh, from just this one little aspect that I wanted to do originally. Um, notes to keep in mind. I mean, I think what's really important for I don't know if this is composition. Or it, it it goes into composition and texturing as well is um, density of detail. So like giving your eyes specific uh, like spaces to rest as well. So obviously this is quite a busy scene um, with a lot of like little stuff going on with the wires and and cables and stuff. But that's why I opted to have this more um, a little bit more stylized art style. Right. So this is. This style is very, I always try to describe it as mostly realistic models with uh, like slightly stylized textures, right? Like the proportions, most of them are pretty realistic. They just have some exaggerated features like, um, yeah, like uh, this bent, uh, like everything's a little bit bent and has a little bit of a, like no straight lines um, unless they're really necessary. Um, and then that can help you with with like coming up with your own little uh, game plan, I'd say. Uh, yeah, that's actually quite interesting, right? Because a lot of people are probably interested in you can you can look at references, but then how do you adapt them to like a more stylized scene like this? Um, you you named some of the steps already, where like no straight lines and and all that stuff. Were there were there like other things that you were consciously thinking about? Um. Yes, so I didn't write these down. I probably should have, <laughs> but um, there were some rules that I that I kind of um, defined for myself, right? So um, it was no straight lines, or if I have straight lines, I should break them up every now and then, you know, just like the the the, the, the pipes and, and all that stuff and the gutters. Um, then also, I didn't want to have too minute little details um except for some specific areas like the like the branding it was important to me that that was i wanted it to be a little bit too noisy because that's if, like if you look at the reference it it does become uh, i've gone to the wrong place but it's down the road from here <laughs> just scary like it is very overwhelming um having all this branding in, in like this one place right but then on the other hand you have like the these 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 areas where your eyes can rest a little bit what was i talking about earlier um, so you should kind of define your own rules and then it's almost like a filter that you, that you put your, your references through. It's in this case, it was in my mind, but you could also, like I said, make an overpaint over it, um, or stuff like that to, to, to define those rules a little bit further. But yeah, I would, I would take something, um, like, uh, let's just go to the, I think this should be, yeah, this is like the props uh, render that I did. So, um, yeah, I, I, I looked at a bike, right? Basic bike, super generic. Um, and then I looked at how could I make this a little bit more interesting. I thought about, okay, adding some wear and tear, like some, some rust bits. Then this bike specifically was going to be a little bit older. So I tried bending some of the spokes and have, I think I've, I've got like one or two missing as well. Um, and then um, like trying to trying to yeah like i said almost almost you you go through a filter with all of the all of the reference you put it on one side and then you kind of come out the other side with with all of the little details so um the same with this uh thing here as well with the um like with the, the traffic cone it's not it's not completely straight you can see it's got like maybe it was just kicked around a little bit someone drove into it and this that's why it's got like a little dent here it's not completely straight um some of the stuff you kind of like I with the brooms, for example, they were just gonna be in the background. They don't need to be super um high detail or anything. So I kept them kind of uh as like a clean slate. Um but yeah, with with um with this this garbage can, for example, 
I had a lot of different references for those. They always have these 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 garbage cans with the two little holes in them for the for the cans next to the um next to the vending machines. So yeah, I looked at this and I thought, okay, what what do I like about the different references that I found? Because there's a lot of different kind of garbage cans like this. Okay, I want to have the the the, the thing, the the bag, but I can't have it straight down. I need to make it a little bit wavy. I want to have the the writing on it. I want to make it look almost like cute, you know, like it has little eyes on it, stuff like that. So I would go I would go through through the references like that and and kind of always. It's almost as if I modeled it first in, in Max, you know, modeled it the way it is in real life. The only thing I did was maybe um, add a little bit of thickness to stuff because I didn't want lo uh, stuff to look too flimsy. And then I'd go into ZBrush and start roughing it up and adding my own art stuff, right? So most of these props have had a ZBrush pass where I just go went over it and um, I had like added little edge wear and, and stuff like that. Um, so that's kind of how I uh, went to, about uh, getting these references into the art style that I had. I, I didn't do this in the reference phase. I did it in the actual production phase. But especially if you're not used to this kind of workflow, it might make sense to, especially with some benchmark assets, do this at the start and kind of define these rules for yourself so you can have this um, for every prop you do after. And you can kind of have this this little pipeline that you go through with each reference and be like, okay, I like this part, but I want this to be less straight, or I want this to be a little bit more colorful. Like that was something I did as well, right? Is if you look at these tiles, they're not completely white. They have like some of them are like a little bit pink, uh, like more pink. Some of them are a little bit more yellow. Um, the same with this. All of this stuff has a little bit more color than it does in real life, uh, just because. Um, yeah, like you can see, there is some some color differences in these tiles, but just not quite as much as I have in here. And that's just the the style that I was going for in this case. Um, yeah, I think that's it for that. Uh, another question from Joseph. There's a lot of props in the scene, so how did you go about choosing what share texture space with other stuff? What simply use tileable texture trim sheets? Hope that makes sense. Yeah, this is great. Um, I was thinking how we could approach this. Um, that was actually a point that I was going to talk about. Uh, later anyways, is um, using reference to plan out more technical aspects of, um, of your work. So um, we could even use the, the, the picture Timothy posted, or if one of you guys um, has something that they're working on and they're struggling with. So maybe Joseph, if you have um, something like that, that you could, that you have at the moment, you want to create a a specific environment and you 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 you're wondering how to break it down from a technical like texturing standpoint we could go over that together as well and i can give it like do it as kind of an example and we can go over together how we would approach something like this in the future Maybe, um, maybe he's looking for one or something. Um, but um, yeah, maybe should we should we just take a look at uh, what was the you, picture you were referring to, William? The one of the uh, underground that you kind of broke down with the uh, what part you're going to make tileable, uh, mm. what part is going to be a trim sheet. That yeah. I mean, mm. yeah, you can. You can have anyone in the chat like uh, post a picture, or you can take one from yourself. I see. I see that Joseph is uh, is typing as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we don't we don't have to do it with Joseph specifically, but yeah, if anyone has something that you know they've been thinking about making and they're not quite sure how to approach it, we can go over something like that together. Mm -hmm. Uh, while we wait, if you don't mind me asking another question, Will. Go ahead. Um, so I'll use your work as an example, but it's kind of like a general thing. So with your like Tokyo scene or like your guns or anything like that, <clears throat> obviously we can't all be 
experts and um, historians and you know absolutely everything so like let's say for example with your tokyo scene if you are finding reference for something like this but obviously you don't specifically understand the language or the culture as much as someone who's like in it yeah how would you go about collecting reference so that you know like someone playing a game theoretically would feel like it was authentic if you know what i mean like mm-hmm. how do you go how do you go about um avoiding those errors in stuff where you can't actually know everything yeah this is super important um again <laughs> this is an amazing question um i kind of touched on it a little bit earlier with how i try to do it for this um especially here it's it's really hard because you can't um you can't just you know take the take the letters uh and and like if, if it was an italian scene right i could just take the take the letters put them in google translate but i don't know how to type these letters so it's 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 really tough to to you know make sure that you're not writing any any weird stuff on your buildings right um and not even that but also um it can be small stuff right like um having having things be in specific uh spots right like i don't know oh nobody would ever put their bike here right like that like you said like cultural differences as well um so i tried to kind of keep true to what i saw um in terms of um if i if i wanted to have a prop i looked at um how these props were actually placed in the real world right so um I was like, okay, I'd like to have some kind of vehicle, um, you know, uh, maybe maybe a motorbike, maybe some just some regular bicycles. So I looked at um, how do they how do they look, right? Is the are they like super modern bikes usually? Are they like uh, just you know, or are they really old bikes? Is there a mix of them? Uh, where do they where do people park them? Do they park them on the street? Do they park them in front of their houses? All that kind of stuff, so that you don't. Like you, you, you shouldn't, especially if you're working on something like this, where you kind of are trying to be faithful to something that exists in real life and that people might actually recognize. That is something where you where you can't look at each prop or each reference in a vacuum. You have to look at the the bigger, um, like uh, the bigger environment that it's in. So, like I said, I've, I saw a lot of um, flower pots and. I saw a lot of them be either on balconies or on on like the side of the road. So I decided, okay, I want to include that. So obviously, you know, I, I, I'm not going to put them in the middle of the road or something like that. So there was there was a very limited place where I could have put them. But if I if I was making a a scene from Berlin, for example, and I had plants like this on the side of the road, that might look, not look right because that's that's not something that happens over here, right? Um, so um it's it's really hard to to um to get this right just because like you said i i'm I'm, i don't live in tokyo Uh, i'm not i'm not an expert on japanese culture at all actually so um what i try to do with this is like i said i I try to limit myself while looking for reference to a very specific little part so i could um so I could make sure that I'm not combining stuff that doesn't make any sense together. Um, so, you know, if, if, if like I'm taking one building that's very specifically from an industrial district and then I'm putting it into a residential area and it looks out of place, I try to not do that by, yeah, by, by trying to keep the, the field where I was looking for references very specific. So um, every time I like looked for a Tokyo garbage can, right? I didn't just put in Tokyo. I at least put in Shinjuku, which is kind of the, the area that I was going for. Um, I hope that, I hope that kind of answers that uh, question. Yep. Thanks so much. Cool. Okay. I see that we've got their first picture. I'm just trying to figure out what I'm working without a concept, how to maintain overall consistency, cohesion between props. Okay. That's, that's something I'm gonna mark that down. How can I? Just gonna put a little thing there. Because uh, I think for now, let's let's jump onto this image and try and see if we can break it down. Um, oh, um, William, can you take the image yeah. from Joseph instead? 
I just posted one as a backup. Okay, yeah. Um, let's see. Okay. All right. This is going to be interesting just because this is a very, like, there's a lot of stuff going on here. And it's Good luck. a little bit hard to see. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, um, so, how I would usually approach this is I would, you know, I would just think about what um, general, like, uh, workflows that are available to me. So, you know, I have. Oh, Jesus for this uh, yeah i think i still have the can i reset this somehow how do i reset this timothy you know right no i have no idea <laughs> all right i'll just put this all to zero yeah 100 percent should be good yeah this is all I'm. I, I was still using all of this um, for. Oh yeah, this looks good for um, Japanese lettering. <laughs> That's why the, all these these things are very strange. So uh, unique baking or you know, like uniquely baked. Um, that's one one way you can make stuff. Then you can make stuff with tileable. Um, you can make stuff with a trim sheet. And um, that's like the first three things that I would mainly break it down into. And then you can have like uh, vertex paint detail, um, stuff like that. Like I would, I, would, I would think about all the stuff that I wanted to use in the scene. Um, and then what I would do, like I said, it's gonna be a bit tough with this. Um, but I would I would kind of go over this, for example, and and kind of mark things out for myself, right? So I'd go start with like a nice pink. Be like, okay. You can do it like this, or you can just do the text in the in in, in whatever color. I think I'll just do it like this. Um Okay. And then I'll say, okay, this robot, uh maybe i don't think i want to you know i can't i can't put this all into one unique texture so i don't think i'll i'll be able to uh to do this but i really want to get this seat you know i really want to focus on this seat i really want to make it super detailed and cool so i, I want to uniquely bake this right um but maybe only the metal parts i want to make the metal parts look really cool and then just have like a generic leather for the for the bits because I, I don't have all the texture space so you know you, you can kind of you know just Go really cheap, mark all this stuff out, and be like, okay, this is gonna be uniquely baked. The same with the keyboard. You know, I'm just I'm just cherry picking specific things here, just because there's so much stuff going on. Um, but that's how I would approach this. And then, okay, I wanna um, all these little things. Ah, they're gonna be so so small. I don't think I I need to actually like fully bake all of this stuff. So we can probably just reuse some some textures there and make like a. a uh, like a rubble texture atlas thing, I would call it. I just make this blue, um, and that's how we're gonna do all of the stuff on the floor, right? And you can kind of mark it out like this. It this kind of um, what I'm doing right now maybe isn't as um, like is, is wouldn't potentially be my go-to for a concept like this i would usually use it use it more for um for something that has a little bit more um that can like might be a little bit more modular but it can still be super helpful just to get everything kind of clear in your head right so you can be like okay all of this stuff is going to be handled with um with just like one texture that i'm that's going to be shared uh, throughout all these all these props um then obviously 
you know, we have the whiteboard, but maybe we want another whiteboard in the, in the background. So instead of uniquely baking this, I'm actually going to say, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to do this really quick and dirty, right? But I, I hope you guys still know what I'm saying here is like, I actually want to make this whiteboard with a tileable and then use decals on top of it to make, to have all the lines so I can reuse the whiteboard asset maybe in the background somewhere if I'm going to do this as a 360 scene. Uh, so I can like, oh. so I can go like this and do like a, this is going to be a decal as well. And, um, the same with, same with all of these little things, you know, I don't need to model out all these post-its. I'm just going to make it a decal. Um, then obviously, you know, the floor is going to be just a tileable. Whoops. What is this not? You know, I'm just going to make the floor is just going to be one tileable, maybe with some vertex paint detail in the corner. I, I hope you get the idea, right? Is is this this is how I would kind of approach it? Um, like I said, I think it makes more sense with something that is a little bit more modular, just because you this is going to be super messy super quickly, just because the scene itself is so messy. Um, but it can it can maybe because it is so messy, it can help you just if you break it down into these colors, you know, you can always have this as a reference to yourself when you're making it and be like, okay, what, what, how, how did I plan to do this again? Oh yeah, right. This is, this was going to be decal. Okay. And then you, you, you kind of, kind of cross reference this with yourself. Um, let's write down. This is a busy one though, said Timothy about his reference. Yeah. Yeah. Joseph, mine are even busier a hundred percent. Yeah. You can, um, you can scratch that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just um, did, do you do you still have that image, Timothy? Uh, the the one I was talking about. Just because I I'd like to show what it can end up looking like, and I have one that I could show, but it's I don't know if I'm allowed to share it. It's not like it's not for for my job, but it's something else that that belongs to someone else. So I don't want to necessarily yeah, yeah. show it. I should uh, I should still have it. I can dig it up. Cool. I honestly I should have gotten it for myself, but you know how it is. Um. So while Timothy's looking for it, let's uh, let me just see if there's anything else. Yeah, I I had a question in the meantime because this is the this is the sort of scene that I would love to do as an environment artist, but there's a big you would but. like it for the first two weeks and then you would hate exactly <laughs> exactly like it's well th th this is my question right like how long would you would you take to make the scene. Well, the the best example I could give is probably my um, my basement scene, just because it's kind of similar to this in the fact that it just has way too many props. <laughs> um, so if you look at this, there's just you know it's, yeah, I mean <laughs> honestly compared to the to the uh, concept there, it looks super uh, clean <laughs> and and not noisy at all. But this has just you know so many little props everywhere. Um, in, in, in each corner there's stuff going on so and this took me I don't know I, I had to I kind of had to reconfigure the whole thing but like it probably took me four to five months all together but could have done it quicker if I didn't have to like reassemble everything but having a, a um, I was also not like in this case I wasn't even working from reference well i was working from reference for each little prop but i wasn't working for a reference of the overall um look because i had changed it over so many times so this is actually a great example on uh, about like what not to do is to just start working without having an idea what you're going to end up with or if you have to change it like i did i had an idea what i wanted to do then i i changed it because it wasn't feasible to do it the way that i wanted to uh because of time constraints and I changed it up, and I didn't take the time to to make a real um, like to define a real look that I wanted. I just had it in my head, which I'm still happy with how it turned out. But that's the whole like, if I had a little bit more direction in my head, I think it could have it could have ended up better. Um, but yeah, in terms of how long it takes, it takes way too long because all of these little props, if you want to make them look really good. You're going to have to bake each and every one of them, which even though they're all very basic, it still takes time if you have to do it all over, like over and over again. 
So you would have to definitely work uh, work smart uh, in the way you approach this by by sharing as many textures as you could and um, maybe you know like just doing stuff in a in a really basic way to also then have this what we we're talking about earlier about like having um, areas of where where your eyes can kind of settle and and relax a little bit. So maybe simplifying some of the especially I feel like the the textures because if you do it the same way it is right here because th then you'll have like roughness and reflections on top of this that might make it look super noisy so i probably you know try and kind of get two birds with one stone there and make like simplify the textures just a tiny bit um to make myself like make make the easier make the work easier for myself and also uh to make everything easier on the eyes in the end um Tim's a senior, but we're still calling the shots. Wow. Um, so yeah, this is um, this is great. This is exactly what I was talking about. Um, how I would approach something like this. Here you can already see it's because it is a little bit more modular and uh, or, or like uh, structured. Um, it's a lot easier to see all the colors because um, if we if we obviously did what we like if we did the same treatment to this, it'd be a clusterfuck of colors, uh, which it already is starting to be. Um, so here you can you can break it down with wow, beautiful handwriting, Tim. Um, so you'd have unique bits, metal tileable, okay. Uh, decal strips for this part, all right, cool, cool, cool. We've got the we've got the wall tileable that just goes all the way down, and then the floor tileable, right? So we already pretty much know how to do all of this. But that's in the reference, and then we can start thinking about okay, I want to I want to add some exposed cables. That would be cool, right? So this is exactly what I was talking about the whole time. To is to make this your own, make the reference your own. Think about hey, how can I actually, you know, take this rather mundane reference, which could be cool to create on its own, but how can I make it even more cool and interesting to look at um so yeah you can like i said it's it's not a bad thing to add text if you want to um if you want to like um jesus if you em want to emphasize something so you know you he did like a little overpaint by adding some dirt but maybe the next time he he uh, he would have looked at it he would have forgotten because you can kind of overlook it right but then by adding these texts you know next time he looks at it okay cool i know i want to add more grime here Vertex paint damage, he already knows how it's going to do it, like the, the workflow as well with the vertex paint. He knows how to do this, just do a, a trim sheet, and he's pretty much got the whole thing down, right? This obviously is a very basic scene. It ha doesn't have a lot of props. It doesn't have, um, like, a lot of different angles. It's only one angle, I think, right, Tim? You ended up doing the one angle? Yep, exactly. Just yeah. the one. Um, but yeah, that's, um, but that, that's a great example of how to approach something like this, because now... It almost feels like there's not even that much to do, right? Okay, all I got to do is do a metal tileable, uh, a, a tileable for what's this? Oh yeah, for like the the metal grate. Make a wall tile tileable, make a floor tileable, then make a couple trim sheets, and then I just have to arrange it all. It's easy, right? So even though it's still gonna be a ton of work, you can by planning it out like this, you've got all your work out uh, set out for you. It's like a, it's like when you're cooking, right? You want to do the the mise en place thing where you have everything in place and you just gotta gotta chop your veggies and it's you know put it all together so <laughs> it's it's um i think that's something that people underestimate is how concepts can uh, or um uh, sorry references can help you not only with the visual development of something but also the way you're going to technically handle it right that's i think that's that's a really, really cool way of using reference is by using it in this in this sort of fashion where you where you start thinking about how you can make it work on a technical level and how you want to work it uh, approach it in a from a workflow perspective. Um, <laughs> I'm sure every question has been answered. Do you, think you don't have to answer, answer that one. <laughs> but no, it's I, um. I have it's... no idea what what he's talking about <laughs> that's all right no but i I'm think sorry. i think even even with this example on on the screen right is um yeah 
yeah even even with this i deviated so much from like my initial idea where i when i just had like all the cables but it served me as like a guideline of like look i, I just want to push it more in that direction and then yeah. eventually end up with something where i'm just adding stuff on the fly right um but it gives you like a solid foundation yeah 100 percent. why did you come up timothy there you are i don't know man um so if we look at this right so this is now the god where did i where did it go no, not the right one god this is so hard with only one <laughs> with only one screen but <laughs> you can kind of see the development right so i guess a lot of the stuff you you put in here you actually ended up doing right having the tileable here um having the the decals on the bottom here having the titleables uh, the, the trim sheets for the cables but then you can start adding on top of it right it's like okay i i do want some some extra stuff up here i actually really like this so that's exactly what i was talking about earlier as well is the thing with having um everything like having your your reference be a, a living document in a way so you you have to be flexible or at least it helps to be flexible um and adapt to to what you want to do if, if if you know if you if you've planned everything out that's great but if it still ends up looking bad then you've you're going to have to adapt and then maybe think about how you how you want to approach it again um yeah um okay cool i yeah sure sure raj if that's what you want to hear then go ahead um uh yeah ryan thank uh, thank you thanks a lot for for the questions um have a good one man um let me just take a look at my notes but also i mean maybe should we take like a five minute uh like a break just so everyone can i don't know get a drink go to the bathroom or whatever so we can mm -hmm. come back yeah that sounds good we can uh cool. like a five minute break do exactly that and then um Maybe dive into some more examples if people if people want to post like their own examples or if they're thinking yeah. about doing a scene could be really interesting. One hundred percent. Yeah, I'll, I'll look at my um, notes as well and see if there's anything that I really want to talk about that we haven't touched on yet. And then, yeah, we can we can get a nice little last uh, last bit out of here and hopefully get some get some important stuff uh, that we might have missed. Cool. Then uh, awesome. I guess I'll see you in five minutes, everybody. All right, stretch those legs, people. Five minutes and we'll be back. Hey. All right, cool. I think we had our five minutes, right? Should we dive straight yes. back into it? Yep, let's do it. Um, um, oh, go ahead. Yeah, let's, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I had a, s a small question. I, I just came back. Uh, it's like, uh, if you just pick up a, a concept art for like a, a prop but you have you want to scale up the scene and you have n no real reference to go with that uh, how would you approach it um so also like uh, scale wise is what you're saying right so if you if you're um if you take a concept and you want to integrate it into a scene that's that you already have or um... no it's like you just you you have a concept for a prop and mm -hmm. you just feel like you want to do scale up more because you, you you don't you feel like the the prop by itself is not enough. Mm -hmm. uh, how would you gather the references? How would you uh, say it to say no when to in terms of how many props I should do? Oh, okay, gotcha. So if you like, when to stop adding stuff? Essentially, like when when yeah, you... what to add and when to stop? Yeah, it's. <sighs> It's again, it's kind of a hard balance to to strike um, because you don't want it. You don't want what you're what you're making to look too barren and too boring, but you also don't want it to look too noisy and overwhelming to the to the viewer. Um, so it's it comes with experience, but it also just comes from um, if you if you start blocking out stuff, right? If you if you keep adding props and just by in this case by making props you know you you just make a simple gray box block out right you just make it put the pivot in the right place so you can replace it later um no texture on it and then you can you can put it all together and look at it and be like okay 
does this look good from a from a visual standpoint like uh, composition wise does this look too noisy already without even any details on it because then that will tell you i need to scale it down a little bit so the easiest way with it's that with a, it's like that with a lot of um 3d environment related stuff is to kind of get placeholders in early so that you can chain like you can iterate on it quicker right because if you if you make a prop and then you make another prop and another prop and another prop to add it together then if you actually find out that you've done too much you'll it'll take a long time or you've wasted you, you really haven't wasted it but you quote unquote wasted a lot of time by making these props that you don't end up using so that's why it's even more important to to get all of this in the planning phase like either by making an overpaint or by start like starting to photo bash stuff together or like i said start with 3d 3d concepts or 3d placeholders start putting stuff together maybe even put a placeholder texture like just a photo texture on it see hey does this work in my scene color wise or just detail wise is it going to be too noisy or should i just simplify some of this a little bit um start thinking about if you want something to be stylized or realistic, right? If you if you're if you're looking at something more realistic, then you might be able to get away with a little bit more noise. But if you want something that's stylized, you might want to think about uh, what I talked about earlier with like the the balance of um, of details and the amounts of details that you want, and like maybe leaving some surfaces almost completely clean to have that contrast. Um, yeah, yeah, it's it's. That's the thing with a lot of these questions. It's going to depend a lot on your art style, your scope, um, generally what you want to do. But that that would be like um, my my way of approaching that kind of stuff. Is just doing a lot a lot of planning. Uh... Yeah, the, yeah. The, the the picture, the the concept I was speaking was posted in the chat anyway. So I think we are going to talk about it uh, after. Yeah. Yeah, let's uh, let's do it. Yeah, um, I I just added the picture in in the chat because it's a really good discussion point. Basically, what what Guillaume was kind of referring to is if you have this this reference of this chest mm -hmm. that we have, like how do you build a scene around that that is still mm -hmm. that is still in relationship to that chest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I um I don't know if we should start with that or if we should start with um the noodle shop first um just because i've got it open but then we can get like circle back to the to that chest yeah i think mm -hmm. it's it's better to go with uh everything in order yeah Fun. cool mm -hmm. let's let's do it um yes so this is this is really cool because it is i mean not compared to the one that we looked at earlier but it is noisy in a way but it still has some stuff that we can definitely like um uh mark out as, as stuff that we can simplify in in a from a from a work workflow uh, perspective so i'd look at this and say obviously you can you can always decide you know you could make one of these chairs or like um stools and um and copy it over fully bake it you can even make something like this with tileables and uh, weighted normals um that that kind of stuff really depends on uh, the project um but if I wanted to make this in like a pretty high quality um, scene, I'd say uh, start with. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to not trying to not use yellow because I don't think you'll be able to read it very well. Um, unique. So let's say blue is unique. So I'll just mark one of the chairs because then I already know that all of the other chairs uh, are gonna be the same you know i'm as you can see i'm not trying to take ages for this i'm gonna do it pretty quickly pretty rudimentarily but even when you're doing this for real you know it doesn't matter if you don't mark everything perfectly uh because it's just for you or for someone else to get the point across it doesn't need to look visually stunning so okay this is going to be unique I'm, I'm gonna um not even talk about the characters because i'm just thinking about the environment um so okay let's take a look around um i can see that this thing has a very specific what is that is that a light no i don't know like this for example would be something that i'd have to look into like what is this thing how it how is it used um and then that will make it easier for me to 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 model it later on 
but this seems like something that I want, might want to make unique as well. I'm just marking one of them because there's it seems like there's two, um, and uh, you know having like I don't know like let's say this this thing is going to be unique and then we we can copy it over like three times as well. Um, but more interestingly, like the unique stuff, uh, honestly, you could even leave that out and, and mark all the other stuff first and then everything that's left over you can make unique. Um, but let's let's think more about, let's say, um, color can I use for this? Just this. Hideable. Um, you, can, you can do it the way that, um, that Timothy did by defining the specific titles, right? So he had like... Uh, wall tileable, floor tileable. You could do it like that. Uh, I'm going to do it very basic in this case and just say anything that's going to be a tileable is going to be green. Um, but you might want to, um, you might want to like split it up a little bit more. So uh, I'm just going to do it super quickly um, and say, okay, all of this. Oops. All of this is going to be tileable. Um, this floor is going to be a tileable, and then you can, you know, you can think about, hmm, do I want to make, um, do I want to make this edge here that is a little bit different, uh, that has that, uh, those like extra notches in there? Do I want to make this part of the tileable because um, I can map it in a way that this is always on the ends? So I want to make a specific trim sheet for this and have it as a sec uh, separate uh, texture set. All, all those kinds of questions is now is when you would answer them. You know, okay, this is obviously just going to be another tileable or actually the same tileable as this mapped to over here. Um, and then, I mean, I'm doing it very, very quickly, but I hope you can, you can still kind of get uh, the point. And then... For example, this, right? We have a normal edge here. How do we want to do this? We could we could have this be um, a trim sheet. So like this would be like a 25 centimeter wood trim and then like a three centimeter wood trim or however thick this would be. We could make it with weighted normals and just a tileable. Um, same goes for this. It seems like this is, has like a rounded edge. So this is probably just going to be a tileable. I think for this, we should probably... Um, we should probably... Um, uh, like um, break this down into the different types of tileables. So, for example, for this, we could even use the same textures for this and this tile tileable, and just have another texture, like another uh, tint, or even like uh, another like normal map that blends over this one. Um, so we can reuse it. That's why I'll, I'll I'll make it both green in this case. Um, then we can have um, what is this like a it's like a fake marble type material, I guess. Uh, like artificial marble. Uh, I'll just call it marble tileable. Um, and mark out this whole piece. So this is going to be one tileable that's probably going to use some kind of weighted normal for um, for the for the edges to make it look nice and round. And then uh, it's not a great color, but I think you'll uh, you'll still be able to see hopefully. And then, um, seems like we're not going to be using a lot of wood in this scene, so we might we might be able to get away with making this an actual trim sheet, because um, a trim sheet can 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 be really cool for for smaller details as well. If we have like wood on any of these things, we can have this as part of the trim sheet where we already have the normal information, so we can add it on smaller assets that would be too small to add chamfers for weighted normals. So. Uh, let's say we'll we'll make a trim sheet. We can make another um, Photoshop file later for the trim sheet as just as a reference for for that. Um, if we wanted to, we'll not do it today, but you could just by by saying, okay, the red thing is going to be the wood trim sheet that's also going to be used up here for this big board, um, and then. Uh, potentially for for other wooden stuff that that might be like on the knives you know the handles of the knives um if we don't want to fully bake those so you could have what i mean by like having a breakdown reference for the for the trim sheet would be um we would have to look at what what width do we need for this trim sheet so we'd need like 125 centimeter three centimeter maybe five ten like a couple of different sizes so we can map it to different um 
different parts of meshes that we might need later on. Like here we could also use a trim sheet for to add all these cool little details, but because it seems like we're going to use a lot of um, like kind of bare metal-y type textures for for the top stuff that goes like this, I think this is an air duct or maybe it's just like a room divider type situation. Um, but also for the cabinets, I just make, um, um, oh God, I got rid of my thing, but um, let's do, let's do like purple, I guess, is I'll call it like tintable metal tileable that we can use for any kind of different metals. We can have a roughness um, slider on them. So we can use it for the, the, the like the, the shell, I guess of the sign um but we can also use it for all of these kinds of metal parts we can use it for the furniture inside the kitchen and uh we can just for the sign for example we can turn up the roughness a little bit um maybe uh, make the albedo a bit darker and then um for the sign itself, I'll just make a emissive material that's going to be super basic that we can then also use on the on the lamps as well. So I'll put it uh, starting to run out of colors, um, like a cyan, I guess. Um, emissive. I'm just going to call it emissive. Um, Again, this is like you only need to take care of these names if you're if you're planning on giving this to someone else, right? Uh, in this case, it just needs to be for you. You know, and then you can mark these down as just okay. These are just going to be emissive titleables, and then um, and then I'd probably for this like you could have some specific assets that have their branding on them. But for this case, you could even think about making like one big decal sheet with all of the, all of the branding in it, right? You could have these signs, all of this like uh, uh, menu, the name of the restaurant, which I assume is what this is saying right there. Um, you could have that all in one decal sheet. So I just uh, let's grab another color. Hmm. I guess this, like a, um, and call it like decal sheets branding. Wow, that's a beautiful color. Um, and obviously you can make it a lot cleaner and nicer and take a lot more time than I have but I think even with what we've done just now we can have a little bit more of a better idea of how, how we would want to approach this if we were to actually make this which I now want to do because it looks really cool um, yeah this is this is how it would go about um about breaking something like this down. Um, is there any any questions about this this process um, or about this specific reference? Like one thing you'd wonder, how would I want to make this? Right. Uh, I see you put the the kind of metal. In unique, but uh, could it just be a title? Uh, this piece? Yeah, the, this this blue one because it seems like a, a bit basic. So yeah, um, yeah, it, it could could it be just uh, wrapped to um, to a me metal texture? Mm hmm. A hundred percent. This is this is the kind of stuff where you would have to make decisions based on um, how not only like um, how detailed you want to go from a from an art direction type of way like so you have to think about how noisy do i want stuff to be how close am i going to actually go with the camera for a game for example you might want to make something like this unique if it's going to be a gameplay prop right if if the player is going to interact with it or if it's oh, yeah. a first person game right but if if especially if it's a third person game yeah 100 percent, it's going to be a title even in a first person game it's probably just going to be a title um, it would be something that you could make unique if you wanted to, if you wanted to like um, have maybe some dents in there to add some uh, environmental storytelling. But yeah, honestly, you would probably just wrap this around a metal tileable and then um, add these little uh, 
like I guess this is like a uh, plastic cutlery in the top. And yeah, even the same thing with these chairs or uh, stools, right? You could you could make all of this with a metal tileable. Have um have maybe like a rubber trim sheet that goes around the the, the side of it, um, and then a leather tileable for the top. No no worries. Um, and then you could even have specific detail to, and add it to each of the stools by having like um a decal that is like um uh, stitches. Yeah, that's like stitches or uh or even like um where the leather is broken up and we can kind of see the filling of the chairs, right? You can you can even have that like where you can see the upholstery of, in, on the inside. Like you can you can choose obviously the amount of detail that you'd like, and there's a lot of different ways to achieve it. Um, this was uh this was just to give like an example, right? So this is how you could do it if you wanted to make everything very very detailed, but if you wanted to make it a little less detailed, but still look really cool, you 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 could go the other route as well. Um, which probably honestly would make a lot more sense. Uh, you're right about that. Um, yeah. Um, good question. Uh, anything else? Tools are way too close. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Doesn't look super comfortable, especially now that we were all used to like social distancing. <laughs> doesn't look. Doesn't look too great. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Leon. Um, appreciate it. Um, I guess we got over this. Um, I, I, yeah, just, I, need to, just, I need to figure out. Yeah, go ahead. Just to just to add like my two cents to this, especially because the the interesting conversation that was happening between uh, you and Guillaume as well. This is the interesting thing about about like these breakdowns, right? Like there, there will always be some sort of a core where like the, the tiles are always going to be a tileable. There's no reason to do it otherwise, but it's interesting yeah. to see that sometimes we would approach it differently to compare to what we have in our minds. Like for example, that little wooden trim, I wouldn't even bother with making exactly that one. I, will, mm -hmm. I wouldn't even you bother just making make it a like tileable. A, exactly. And just do like yeah. what you mentioned too, right? Like just add more geo to it. Yeah, but yeah, it it depends on like restrictions and 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 some some yeah. I mean, mostly restrictions to be honest. Sometimes yeah, you 100%. just don't have the option to. I think that's something that that we've noticed as well, right, Timothy? Is I usually tend to to try and make more stuff a little bit more unique and go for trim sheets where I can add specific edgeware and stuff, and you go for stuff that's more modular. Um, mm -hmm. So that it comes down to if you're talking about a personal project, it comes down to personal preference. And obviously, if you're in a in a professional environment, it'll come down more to what the limitations are of each project and the time constraints. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of different ways to approach each and every thing here, except for yeah, something like the tile. Those are always going to be a tile of a texture. You could like <laughs> it doesn't really uh, make sense with this, but like you can start thinking about like adding parallax occlusion to it, but it's still always going to be a tileable, right? Um, but yeah, we have a lot of different ways we could we could make this unique if we wanted to, and then, but uh, I probably just make this as a base and then have a have a decal over it. Um, a lot of different ways to approach it, um, and yeah, it always depends on on what kind of environment you're in. Uh, okay, let me find the next question that we haven't gone over yet. I think um, it was a question by Hisham when yes. when creating a piece without concept, how important is scale? Yeah, uh, it's absolutely essential. Um, scale is something that I've underestimated in the past. Let me just see if I can find a, a good example for this, and I can maybe shed a little bit of light onto the the basement scene that I've shown before. Um, it should be in here. Yep. Uh, uh, screenshots okay so this is how all of this uh the basement scene started it started out as like uh, a material study of like how can i how can i blend different materials together right so how could i have bricks uh with like a um, um what's it called like mortar on top of it that then holds tiles and how can i make this blend in a in a cool way this is a bit, this was a very long time ago so it was very like I'm, I'm not very happy with any of the tex these textures now, but um, that was like my my original attention 
intention with the scene and i wanted to make like um something that's very focused on environmental storytelling and uh and these like um materials and i made this and it just always looked wrong oh god i hate this this blendable dirt that looks gross um but something just always looked off about this and then i finally realized because i didn't take the time to do it before is that the tiles and the bricks are just absolutely huge like the scale is completely off this looks super like you can't even really describe how why it looks wrong it just does uh it looks like cramped and and strange and looks like it's made for dwarfs but it's it, it, it like the rest of the props and stuff are scaled more or less correctly so it makes it look really really wrong and it's hard to put your finger on it um but then when i decided to go over that again and i changed the the tiling of the uh, the tiles and i made a completely new brick texture i think this is it um uh, you can already tell that it looks a lot better um and i started to kind of go uh and um yeah like i, I remade the hole in the wall and stuff and um with this scale it already looks a, a, a lot more like um just it just looks more right uh it looks it looks correct um so yeah, this is, I mean, this is how the scene uh, was kind of working. It was like, it was going to be a bank robbery thing with people squatting in the thing. And then it kind of turned into this, which was more of a weird, um, uh, it, it almost looked like a prop thing, like a prop showcase, which I didn't like. So that's why I ended up going for this design with the, with the ping pong table in the middle to have like a focal point. Um, so that's coming back to the whole thing about composition, right? So you have to think about all, all that stuff um yeah so scale is something that you should always nail down while you're doing your blockouts and it can be hard if it's if something's wrong with the textures because that's you can't change that in a geometry you'll have to change it in the texture or with a tiling or something like that so um always double check that kind of stuff to get it out of the way because it can be really really hard to kind of detect later on um, oh, I meant more in project scale, but the scene scale is indeed very important. <laughs> yes. Okay, so let me re -import how important is scale. Um, I, I guess it just depends on how much time you, you have, right? How much time you want to put into something. So if you look at a concept and you can already tell that it's going to take you months and months, but all you really want to do is just have a quick little thing that you can finish in your free time and put in your portfolio, then you might want to either choose a different concept or, or, or a reference or find a reference or concept that is a little bit more, um, <clears throat> or, let, or well, you can find a different one or you can modify this concept or reference to where you feel like it's going to be more feasible to create. Um, so you have, you have a couple of different options there. I personally um, always gravitate to make too much stuff. Um, which can be really hard because it can be really hard to stop if you're if you're feeling like you're on a roll you want to keep adding stuff but that's when you should start looking at the thing as a whole and um and start thinking about maybe you know I'm I'm going a little bit too far I don't need all of this and that's why even though you know there's still a lot of stuff going on in my in my Tokyo street I feel like there is still that balance and I if I would have gone further I feel like it would have been too much even though like it's already a lot but that's it's also what i found in the reference right so you can you have to kind of have to balance it out um ba, 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 ba. okay uh, that was it. Uh, okay then joseph again what inspired you to go with a straight uh street ahead uh head on okay this is it, it wasn't really a decision um because if i yeah go ahead uh, was that you, Joseph? I, I think it was Jack. <laughs> oh, sorry, no, um, my control key is uh, set to push the talk, so I was pushing uh, okay. control by accident. Gotcha. Um, I can show the same thing that I just showed for the, um, for the basement for this as well. I didn't take too many screenshots for this, unfortunately, like uh, until the end, but um, I can show where it started, right? It, like I said, it was all... It started with this roof, uh, like material study thing, trying to get like a cool stylized look. And then I was like, okay, I like this. I'll just put it on, on a block out on like a roof thing. Started making some other stuff. I started playing around and I was like, okay, I guess I'm, 
guess I'm making a little environment now. And it just kind of kept evolving from there. So at, at the start, it was just going to be this. Um, and then it just kept, kind of kept going. I was like, oh, well, I guess if I'm making a road, I can make stuff on the side of it as well. So I can start adding more, more and more buildings and uh, the sidewalk. And, and you can kind of see how, it, how, it, how it's going from there. And then suddenly you've got all of this. So it wasn't ever really my decision to do a, a, um, a street head-on like this. Um, it was just kind of how it organically ended up being. Um, but yeah, ideally you would try and think about that early on. Like that's a lot of my scenes aren't perfect examples for what I'm trying for what I'm telling you. Just because this is a lot of the time how I work is very in a very iterative way, and I I kind of um, adapt to to what's going on and what I want to what I kind of feel inspired to do at the time, um, which is definitely a way to work, but it's maybe not the fastest. Which if you're if you're trying to get uh, portfolios like stuff uh, done for your portfolio um, to to apply somewhere might not be the best way to go, um, but yeah, that's that's kind of how how it ended up being this kind of um, street like this head on instead of maybe having a, a street corner or um, houses on both sides of the road. Um, but this is then also something that I I realized that. Uh, at the point that I was, it was going to be the easiest way to finish it if I just kept it like this, instead of if I wanted to add a completely other side of the road, it was going to not only mean that I would need to move some of the houses over to the other side of the road, but then if I want to look down the road, what's at the end of the road? Like, is there going to be another building that it, it's like a, what's it called? Like a, a dead end? Or do I want to make it go around a corner? Or does it just go all the way down and then I'll need a thousand buildings there, you know? It was that was kind of the question um and that was kind of the answer that uh, the thing that answered it for me in the end is just um scope um ba -ba -bum. Uh, Kyra, even though you weren't working with concept did you have a couple of shots in mind so that you didn't get overwhelmed with asset lists and worrying about stuff outside of the shots um again very um very different way of working in this case but yes i did so um, as you can see, I, I had a, a couple different screenshots here that I that I was taking just to kind of like this was like a shot that I was thinking about making the thumbnail, even when there wasn't a lot of stuff going on. I was like, okay, I could make this a thumbnail. I didn't end up doing it like this, but it's like an early idea. And then this, these kinds of shots I had. Uh, some of this is just as like an overview, but some of these these shots I was like, okay, this could be an interesting interesting shot for later on. Um, get a couple of angles, maybe some, some close-up shots. Um, and that's what I like to do. I, th uh, I think I mentioned earlier, I had like 20 to 30 cameras already set up in here with all of the shots that I, that I liked. So I could later on maybe adjust some of them uh, and cherry pick. And uh, also, like, uh, like you said in your, um, in your uh, comment, Cairo, think about where I need props and where I don't need them because they're not going to be seen anyways. Uh, I was going to add a lot more like light fixtures and, 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 and models for that kind of stuff. Uh, but I didn't end up needing it because all of this stuff was like hidden under like all of these light fixtures are actually hidden in this, uh, like under the balcony. Cause there's like a, a thing that comes out there, like a, like a little dividing wall. Um, and that made it, yeah, that made it a lot easier. Having these camera, uh, points already set up, made it a lot easier for me to think about what where i need detail and where i can kind of get away with um not adding too much uh, <laughs> some of these questions aren't like 100 percent on topic with the concept and stuff but i think like i actually really like this i don't know uh timothy how you feel about that but i feel like we can we can tackle some questions about that as well um, it's totally up to you yeah i i, I like doing that i think it's because it, a lot of the a lot of the topics do kind of um blend in with each other um, oh yeah yeah for sure um it's it's also interesting what um what jack mentioned it's he mentioned that it's mad how your environment came from that one single experiment yeah. and <laughs> i mean yeah. if you look at my personal work that has that's on my portfolio it's probably the same thing <laughs> yeah 
Yeah, I mean, it's, it's actually funny, right? If you look at this and then compare it to what I said about the basement scene, it's very similar in a way. It both yep. started with material uh, exploration. And actually, uh, I've got a couple things that I'm that I'm kind of working on at the moment. I'm, I'm actually not... Um, uh, like I'm not, I'm not focusing too much on personal work at the moment. Um, but what I've started doing is, uh, well, yeah, a material exploration in, in Unreal, right? Is uh, I made a snow material and tried out some some things there, and then yeah, I, that's that's really how I like working because a lot of the time I need something that inspires me, and usually what inspires me the most is getting started on a project and trying something out and then make like seeing it work like i i really really like this if this didn't look as cool as it did at least to me this 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 looked really cool at the time and i still really like this um if it didn't look as cool as it did i probably wouldn't have made the scene right so um that's what kind of gives me personally this, this little kick to uh to get me going um and then i was like yeah if, if i have all of this i can start thinking about all of these little details with the wires and all the stuff and because that was obviously the all the all the cables and telephone poles and uh whatever is like a huge part of the the tokyo uh identity right and um so that's why i started with that also to nail that down and, and get this kind of out of the way so i knew um that i could i could potentially make it uh make it happen uh... Okay, I think the next thing would be Lloyd's uh, cyberpunk uh, city scale cyberpunk, but not the actual city. Yeah, that's a good call. Also, how you balance time between the more unique props in the scene and the overall picture. Okay, let's take a look at this. Yeah, this is a this is a big boy. Um, I mean. <sighs> So we could we could do a similar overpaint um, to to what we did with the um, uh, with the the sushi shop. No, the what was it? The noodle shop. Um, but I don't think we we need to because um, I hope I hope you kind of have the the basics of how to do that uh, on your own. But correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but how how to kind of balance the the time uh, that you want to put into the overall picture compared to the the props separately that's a great question because that is going to like that could really you could really shoot yourself in the foot trying to make each and every prop look perfect while it actually doesn't even really have an impact on the overall uh scene um put it there as an option for the look already cool um but yeah something like this always get the big stuff out of the way first right and then potentially some questions so if you look at what i did here started kind of unconventionally with the material exploration but then what i did well in this case also not a great example because i i didn't end up making five block outs or five buildings because i thought i was just gonna make one but yeah i i got the block out in there and started thinking about some more material stuff this is honestly again why did i start with the with the with this stuff honestly just because i wanted to use marvelous designer because i hadn't used it in a while that was like why i did the garbage um <laughs> garbage bags first um but uh, again here like a, a big question that i had is how was i going to make the road um so i got that out of the way first like answering the big questions because i did i wasn't worried about the the wall texture um but i was worried about how i was going to make the road look good uh with the decals and stuff on top of it so um like getting the big stuff out of the way first um not 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 necessarily the big stuff i'm talking I'm, I'm talking not about the big stuff as in the stuff that takes up the most space even though that can also be a valid um strategy but more like the big questions that you're that you're worried about the most so in that case for me that was the road um and then here i already started like finalizing these props because i thought i was only going to make one um one house and then you can see i started like thinking about other stuff around it as well um and then for this concept here i'd um i just block out the big the big blocks that you want to have in there go and add um stuff like bigger maybe modular props or environment pieces like the like the um what's it called like the uh, fire uh fire exit fire emergency ladder <laughs> uh <laughs> whatever thing it's called um and then all of the pipes and stuff so get all of that stuff in 
and then when you have that you can add all of the um you can add all of the little props in as blockouts and you then can already tell if you like i think kairo said it have these camera shots already prepared you can see how much of the screen it actually takes up and or is it even going to be visible at all from the angles you're planning to do and then from that you can go and kind of um kind of plan how much time you want to put into it like for example uh this this uh this trash bin in the back right here might not need a lot of detail or maybe it's maybe it's being reused here at the front so you might want to make a make, might want to add a little bit more detail but like all of this little little stuff in the background here you, you can just obviously you know make pretty quickly unless you want to make another shot from the other side of the this little alleyway here um it's <sighs> In the game, it's also different, right? Because then you have to, like, if you're in a production environment, you'd have to think about where can the player go. Um, I, I need to make stuff maybe that's closer to the ground, make it more detailed, while all of this this stuff that's floating up in the air, all of these, like, neon signs, they don't need to be as detailed, but maybe what, what if the player can climb up there? Whole other story. So, really, um, <laughs> I, I hate to say it again, but it really does depend on the scope and the situation for your project where you want to put your time but especially with like fixed camera um personal projects you should try and get that stuff out of the way and um and try and see what you need for each camera angle um and have a good one cairo thanks for joining um cool does that answer your question lloyd Okay, let's keep going. Oh, the okay. So the next one is the is the chest. Uh, for uh, that was for Guillaume. Yeah. Cool. Um, so you were uh, asking how you could create a scene around this, pretty much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what 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 are you um, what's the part that you're struggling with? If you want to create a scene around it that just showcases this prop so do you just want to have like a backdrop or do you want to have an actual bigger scene around it and what are you having problems with the technical aspect or more the how to like design it and make it look good uh, i think it's more about making it look good and the uh, whole thing was more like of uh, something to complement the the asset to, uh, mm -hmm. not just a, a simple backdrop to just to have something you know to um, showcase it and yeah, not just have a background like uh, in the concept art. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's. Um, I don't know if this is from a, from anything specific, like if this is a reference to something or. Uh, yeah. Or, like. Yes, that's a reference to the fairy tale Bluebeard. Okay, I don't think uh, I don't think I've heard of it. Um, but so you, I would probably look into into that lore kind of right and see if there's anything. Where this is like placed in a specific uh, um, uh, place. A room, yeah. Yeah, yeah actually. Yeah. It's um, basically the, the there is just a, a rich man who murders the, his wife and just he hides them inside of, of a closet. Uh, and uh, oh. every time a, a wife is, <laughs> goes to see what it's inside the closet while he's away, gets oh. in the, inside the closet. Jesus. And, uh, yeah, it's just a fair tale to say. Uh, curiosity is bad. I mean, honestly, I've um, the first idea that comes to mind for me is having like a woman's shoe next to it. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Like, I just imagine someone like leaning over to look at what's in it, and then the the chest uh, kind of almost like eating eating the wife up, and the, they all they leave behind is a little is a little um, uh, uh, like a like a, sh a shoe like a like a old school like a women's yeah. shoe i guess that, that could be you know yeah that, that that could be that could be funny um or just like an interesting um interesting kind of uh idea for visual storytelling and then for the for the backdrop itself yeah um i wouldn't i wouldn't go too crazy on detail if you're focusing on this 
if this should be part of a greater environment, then you can have a little bit more stuff going on. But honestly, for this, I would just make um, maybe, I don't know if this is supposed to be, you know, in, in like a wooden floor room with, with some um, kind of uh, rough masonry walls in like, like, uh, kind of in like uh, a castle. Yeah, um, since it's kind of medieval, medieval mm -hmm. time, I was thinking of uh, maybe have, at first it was like uh, thinking of a, maybe of a torture chamber or something, but when I read one the, the the fairy tale, it was just um, it's basically a closet. It's like a, a closet that he he, lo he locks uh, he locks the door and there's just uh, terrible stuff inside. And mm -hmm. yeah, what I what I did for the so far was just um, making a pavement pavement floor and some bricks with uh, some plaster, and I just uh, vertex painted it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something like something like that. Um, I probably choose as well. I would probably go quite like um, try to keep the noise to a minimum for them to not um, take any attention away from from this, which is the focal point. Um, mm -hmm. But at the same time, obviously, you if you have some detail in the chest or uh, closet itself, you don't want to have a complete. Um, you don't want to break your style completely by having uh, something super detailed and something not detailed at all. Um, what could be cool, um, I don't know if, if, uh, you know, you, you can have like a, a curtain that's kind of, that, that used to cover it and now it's pulled to the side, you know, about the whole curiosity thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Joseph saying a light from the closet door, lighting up the chest could look, yeah, stuff, stuff like that, you know, like putting a focus on it with, with lighting and, um, and adding these little things that, that kind of highlight the, what's, what's behind the story, like the whole curios curiosity aspect of it. Like, um like a pulled back curtain um or uh or like i said like the, the shoe or whatever it kind of maybe tells that story for someone who isn't even familiar with the fairy tale um yeah does that does that kind of answer your question or would you like some more clarification on anything yeah no i i even post if you want a better look at the stuff i did it's uh i may i had a posted a picture like uh just when the when the the workshop started, because I was working a, a bit on it, mm -hmm. so I can just DM you uh, instead of putting inside the, um, the the chat. Sure, go ahead. Yeah. Um, okay. Hard time finding it right now. Um, and then female female figure casting shadow coming from the light. That's cool. That's a cool idea. Um. Yeah. Th thank you, Isaac. Have a good one. Uh, yeah, you can do a lot of st cool stuff with lighting as well. Um, uh, I mean, yeah. What, what else? What else is there? I mean, a lot of a lot of these kind of things you can you can have like little little hints. Oh, that's cool. Uh, can I can I show it on the screen? Is that okay for uh, with you? Yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to uh, to find a. I was trying to make. Yeah, uh, I had all the screenshots. Mm -hmm. As well, inside the um, cool thing. Yeah. Yeah, but this is this is really cool. I like um, I like the cobwebs and stuff. Um, yeah, I uh, I I had uh, some cobweb pictures uh, I bought on an art station, and I just I just threw them on the Photoshop basically, and just uh, unwrapped. And that's yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, it, it adds a lot, though. It like it, it, it kind of adds that feeling of it being, um, being like a place where you're not supposed to be, right? Maybe the the parallax occlusion on the on the floor is a bit high right now. Uh, looks a bit uh, crazy, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, it feels a lot. Uh, you, because you can see the separation with the wall as well, so it's yeah. No, yeah. but the the only thing I might say is um, if if I look at this. Is um, I mean, obviously it's still like uh, you've, you've got all of this only blocked out, but you you can I think you can focus even more on on this wall because that's where the chest itself is standing, right? Like if I look at this camera angle, <clears throat> like you might want to start thinking a bit more about the camera angles you want to have in the uh, uh, in the final thing, because yeah. this looks for for me this doesn't have the focus on the chest that I feel like it should have, but maybe you think uh, different about that as well. But um, yeah, like this, the stuff like these hanging like shackles, in my opinion, you could have them on this wall 
and focus a little bit more on this and have like that one really strong composition. But um, yeah, that's also personal preference. I, I don't know. Do you have anything to say about that, uh, Timothy? Do you, do you have any any feelings? No. Um, well, we talked about it a little bit before, right? I think um, oh, right. just playing with the light is is a really good uh, new yeah. addition. And just yeah, yeah, the suggestion that you made for like the the women's shoe in the picture and and really letting that tell the story is a is a really good suggestion. Cool. Um, all right, let's move on. Um, let's use the scene I've blocked out. Maybe it would be interesting to break down our block out. Let's take a look. This is from Jack. Yeah, is this like a Stalinhag thing? This looks like a Stalinhag to me, right? It's yeah, it's like a like a one of those mines. Uh, that's you know, like underwater mines. I'm yeah. sort of been washed up on a beach. Um, is this an actual picture of, from Simon Stalinhag, or is this like your own little? Uh, uh, this is yeah, this is my own. Cool. Um, Con, yeah. yeah, and design. I think it's a it's a really old block out. I think it's about a year ago, but I want to go back to it after I've done this project. But cool. yeah, I think I was pretty inspired by yeah, uh, right, time and yeah, it's, yeah, with the the thing on the bridge. That's that's a, it's a really cool little block out. I like it. Um, is this going to be the um, like this like a, what is it like mint green? Is that going to be like a swamp water type thing? Yeah, it, it's. it's uh a beach was sort of what i was thinking but then i was uh playing around with the colors a bit and uh so maybe have like realistic proportions on the assets but then almost like a a dream like uh color palette if you know what i mean like you play around with the colors uh, yeah I that mean, makes I, sense yeah i i like that um i like the way you've pro you've approached this by blocking out all of the essentially all of the stuff that you are going to have in there um having the grass in there doesn't hurt at all like um if you have this available to you like i don't know if this is a mega scans or something you you had made from a earlier project um you just put that in there right yeah, yeah it's mega scans yeah if, if threw it in there yeah because it because it can also like answer some questions early on right and then the same goes for for this because it it seems like you just put like a, a super basic projection on there um and it works out really well, even though it might be low res for now, it gets the point across of what it's going to be, um, which is really, really cool. It has, I mean, the the honestly, the composition is already working for me. And then now you could, you could either look for references for, um, for each kind of prop on its own. So if this is, if this was going to be a beach, you could look at like what, what is like a, maybe like a folding beach chair look at bicycles look at uh beach towels little um like uh paint cans paint cans exactly um and all that all that kind of stuff look at how what these navels naval mines how do they work um how would they like react in this certain environment uh in terms of weathering right would they rust would they um would they kind of absorb uh the the, the, the stuff around them would they have i mean i guess they wouldn't rust because they're supposed to be underwater <laughs> But um, maybe on some parts, you know, the like the protective coating that's on them uh, has has uh, scratched off a little bit because it's been out of the water for so long, right? So stuff like that is is what I'd look into a lot. Is kind of make a reference for each of these props that you feel like need it. So maybe for for like a beach ball, you don't necessarily need a ton of reference. But for especially this as the focal point of the scene, I would make something like I've done here with like general shape details would be like um the little like the i don't know what he's called or like the detonators uh that are going to be touching whatever is going to make it explode i guess um details would also be the way that it's um is it is it welded together in the middle is it bolted together in the middle the way it's constructed and then um having a, a separate thing for material where you can look at different types of weathering and that you can all put that all together into what you might need for this and then um, maybe even some some reference pictures for the general mood of your scene, like uh, create a mood board um, to to nail down what you want um, from that. Do you want it to be like a moody, uh, 
you know like a dark little scary thing with the with the um with the naval mind because it is like a destructive thing or do you want it to be kind of the reclaimed nature uh kind of aspect of of this with the with the with the painted face on it and be like a little bit more jolly or or, or whatever you might call it so i think that could that could make sense as well to to nail that down as well um because it could for me right now it could go into different directions but that's also something that you could just have in your head if you're working on this on your own. Uh, yeah. Anything, yeah no. anything oh. specific that, that you'd like to uh, for me to go over on this? Um, no, not really. I think you've uh, helped, me, helped me break it down quite a bit. Um, just trying to think if there's anything. Um, yeah, if you have anything later on that you can think of, you can just tell me as well. Yeah, awesome. Uh, yeah, I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but I'll I'll post in the chat if I do. Cool. Uh, and then Hisham, I hope I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I'm sorry if I'm not. I'm probably not. Um, no, you're. Uh, it's perfect. <laughs> beautiful. Uh, what about going the other way around? So making it more detailed. For example, this shot I took on my holiday. So um. I don't know what you were referring to with what about going the other way around. So I guess we were talking about simplifying something. Uh, and you said, what about making it more detailed, right? Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in this case, the, the, it already looks quite detailed from um, a material definition point of view, right? You have like a, a really cool amount of weathering. And uh, like nice details about how it's constructed is that's this kind of stuff that I'm talking about is like thinking about how this this stuff was made. The only thing that I kind of don't like, <laughs> if you want to call it that, from an artistic point of view, is that there's not a lot of color contrast in it. Right? It's very it's very beige, brown, reddish. It's all that color, which it makes sense in this in this case. But um, if it depends on where you want to go um from from like how how much freedom you want to uh like how many liberties you want to take with this but what i really find really quite interesting is this tiny little plant in there in this huge pot i might want to make this plant a little bit bigger so that you have this kind of reddish sand uh stone color uh contrasting nicely with the with the green uh of the plant that's growing you know adding some details there maybe having um maybe having some other stuff that breaks like um you know like a, a wooden support somewhere that that breaks up the the silhouette a little bit and and also breaks up the materials um it's hard again to know when to stop because you don't want to just keep adding and adding and adding stuff because it's going to be super um crowded in the end um so i would tackle this carefully because i think even though there isn't a lot of detail in the in the actual like uh like color wise there's a lot of contrast a lot of stuff going on but um from a um from a, like an environment point of view there is actually with the with the cool huge crack that has like i think there's like a hose uh, or some kind of um cable going through it um and then uh here like this is all kind of broken up but so i feel like there's already a lot here you just might want to uh, add some some like color variation like almost like you can see that there's i don't know if this is paint or if this is different material but it looks like it was paint maybe you can have this paint and extend it a little bit more towards the end of the like the bottom of this wall so it separates a little bit better with the ground uh stuff like that i might i might think about um there's a lot of stuff you can do i'm sure that um that uh each and every one of us has like a couple ideas in their head of uh what to do with this um but yeah, that 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 would just be a couple of examples that I feel you could go um, in in that direction. Um, Fifty minutes left for the session. If you have any questions left, add them now. Yes, please. Um, but I'm I've, I'm really happy if, um, uh, with how many questions you've got. You guys have uh, have been asking. This is exactly what I was uh, hoping for. I was a little bit afraid that you know if there wasn't going to be enough questions, I I'd run out of steam. But this has been awesome. So thanks a lot to each and every one of you guys for uh, participating in this way. And uh, yeah, I, I hope I could, uh, I was able to help you with some of this stuff. Uh, we actually had a question earlier from Scott Daniel Burns. Yes. 
Is this um, the one that's right below that one? How much of a scene is ideal, would you say, to be uniquely baked versus tileable trims weighted normals? This part? Yep, exactly. Question? Yes, okay, cool. Um, I'll read it again. How much of a scene is ideal, would you say, to be uniquely baked versus tileables, trims, and weighted normals? Specifically in the scenario for a portfolio trying to get a job. What would you say the right mix is, or does it even matter? Just time and the overall scene quality. Very interesting, very interesting questions. You, so it's always a balancing act of all of these <clears throat> things, right? Time, quality, and um, and like uh, effort and whatever. And I mean, it could be in a production thing. It would be money. In this case, it's uh, like man hours, all that stuff. And you need to balance it um, with um, with all of this. So obviously, you would like to have. On the one hand, you'd like to have as much as possible be tidable trim sheets and, and and all that kind of stuff to share and um and be able to reuse as much as possible on the other hand you'd like everything to be unique to have the most amount of detail and the best way to um i feel to to kind of achieve this is again to prioritize by by setting up a camera and trying to maybe looking at what is going to be the focus the visual focus of your scene and putting like maybe making that uh, a little bit more unique. You don't even have to make the whole thing unique. You can just say, um, if we look at this, for example, the, the whole door doesn't have to be unique. What could be unique is just the decals on it with the, the little scratched in stuff. Or you could make this out of a, like weighted normals with some uh, vertex paint on it. But then you could uniquely model just this handle and this chain here. Right, so you can. That's how you can f kind of find the balance, so that you don't need to completely uniquely bake this whole thing, which would also need a huge texture. Um, but you still have that detail in these little parts. So um, it is always a hard balance to uh, to get. Let's maybe look at this again. Um, but yeah, that's 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 the, the the kind of thing that we were talking about earlier as well, right? Where you can approach this in very different ways. Honestly, in this case, yeah, like making these seats out of out of tileables you already have, probably not going to hurt the quality at all, right? So um, then you have to kind of start thinking about each uh, thing individually. Like, if I bake this whole thing completely, am I really getting anything out of it? Probably not. I think it's going to be like I might have some nice like specific variation or like uh, edge wear here and there. But if I just do the trim sheet or just the tile level with the normals, plus uh, adding a, a emissive tile level and a, a decal over it, probably going to have pretty much the same visual quality, but it's going to take a lot less time, going to use less texture memory, uh, less draw calls, all that good stuff. Um, so you can, you you get a feeling for it. Maybe at the start you might, need to like gather that experience first by kind of making the quote unquote mistakes of making something unique and then you realize wait i didn't really have to do that um but usually you really want to try and uh find out what the focus of your scene is so that you can focus the detail in the right spots and in this case i honestly don't think that adding making this whole seat unique is going to have a huge impact on the the general uh, general quality of the scene it might even uh, be bad for you because you're repeating this seat. What is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. Uh, wait, it's. I think I just miscounted. It's eight. <laughs> it's eight of them. Um, and you, you, you might if you if you made one unique and then you have like the scratch that's going to be repeated on all of them. It might look bad. So you would maybe go for something that uh, is a mix of the two, like I mentioned earlier, and make out make it out of um, weighted normals and then have decals on it that uh, might have some specific details that you could add on 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 one of them um if that's even worth it in your in your uh, opinion so it's again it's really hard to make a call um like that that works with everything but um that's what my like most general advice would be for this is um just try and try and think about how important it is to the overall look of your scene um like if this if the seat is unique, what what kind of impact will it have on the rest of the scene, right? So for my thing, it was, uh, I like making a lot of stuff unique, so I probably made some stuff unique that didn't have to be. But um, 
overall, like the one thing that I knew I needed to make unique was going to be the vending machine. That thing had to be uh, really detailed, really awesome. But then like a lot of this this stuff I could just reuse, like or or a lot of the time I was just using like tinting materials and mapping it in a in a specific way. And um like uh retexturing some of these like laundry items and just turning them around uh and reusing them in, in ways that um that I could kind of, you know, just fill a lot of space with it without really having to do a lot of work. I I mean uh, you might be able to tell, but like a lot of this stuff is is completely faked with with just like I use like um what's it called it's called like a spiral blur I think in in Unreal to make this um, milky glass, and then behind this is pretty much just a, a block out with um, with some basic colored textures on it, uh, and it creates this like fake interior of a laundromat uh, that I didn't really have to spend any time on. Um, so that's how you can also think about like getting away with. Uh, some missing stuff. Um, okay. Uh, are you are you content with that answer, Scott? <laughs> or would you like me to elaborate? So oh, yeah, I wasn't really talking. Um, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, I just I wasn't sure if you had a specific outlook on it. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, it's kind of just choosing your battles, kind of right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much you you kind of need to need to see what what is like yeah choosing your battles in in terms of what where is it worth to put your time into and then sometimes you can be like i personally really want to make this thing unique because i really want to and then you can do it but um uh yeah that might not be like you might not be able to have that luxury of of choosing that if you're just trying to get something out there to to yeah to, i think I think what you said with setting, making sure you've got the cameras specifically set up is good. Yeah, because yeah, then you I know if been... something's going to take up a lot of screen space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it helps a lot with planning out, uh, planning all that stuff. Um, okay, hanging weapons in the background. Oh, that was for um, Guillaume's thing. Yeah, that's a possibility as well, like a sword on the wall. Um, uh, Philip. Okay, we'll be headed out as well. Cool. Ba, 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 ba. Any tips for coming up with the narrative for a scene? Oof, coming up with narrative. I. It's again. It's very. It, it's very specific, and it depends on, on from scene to scene. A lot of the time, I a lot of the time I think I like to keep it pretty basic. Keep it more about small little narrative things rather than uh one huge storyline that's that's what i had with the basement before right i was trying to do this whole thing with there was like a bank robbery going on and people people like digging out a piece of the wall and then what i ended up doing here even though you know i'm there's a lot of stuff i'm not happy with about the scene anymore because it's it's been a while but um is a lot of like smaller stories of um of maybe you know thinking about what kind of family or what kind of people would live here and then you start thinking well there's like a there's like a, um, a, a ping pong table in the middle so it probably is a family they have like little stickers on their on their washing machine so you know there's like uh, the, the classic like w the wife bantering with the husband about like uh, chores around the house and whatever and uh they've they're like a little bit playful they've got like the the the, the what is it called the big mouth billy bass on the wall there and you know, i think they've got like a basketball i don't ah, i don't even think you can see it really what a shame there's like a basketball on the top of the shelf as well so you know maybe uh the kids have grown up and they're, they're not using the, the the table as much anymore or the basketball you know stuff like that like not not like this huge elaborated uh uh blockbuster worthy storyline but these 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 kind of small things that you can integrate um with uh within your, your your scene right like um trying to think about how these these people live and uh how they how they kind of manage their their there's the space that they have right so they don't have a lot of space so this guy for example he had, he made like his little corner here with a with his his flower pot and i think his ashtray on top of the ac where he just sits and relaxes after work or whatever right so like these little things that i really like um Okay, so I see we're coming up uh, to the end here. Um, 
so let's let's see i see we've got some maybe not so serious questions at the end i think that's that's perfect to end on very important question how do you survive mondays are you coffee or tea man anyways thanks for the live stream uh thank you for that question <laughs> again of course great question um i'm neither a coffee or a tea man i am probably more a tea man than a coffee man um i don't i don't like coffee um sometimes if it if push comes to shove i'm probably a, a sugar-free red bull man uh unfortunately <laughs> it's that's that's like a, a vice that i haven't been able to kick completely um i did have one before this so that uh, that might be the case why i did talk so quickly <laughs> at the start um and then um pineapple pizza um i I I have I have had it. I don't hate it. It's it's uh, it's not bad. And uh, if you hate on people for eating pineapple pizza, then I say uh, mind your own business. Uh, you know, have them have their fun. Let them have their fun. Um, pizza or burger? Uh, I, I try not to eat either of them too much anymore. So uh, salad. Uh, favorite wood texture? <laughs> what are these questions? <laughs> Jesus. Um, texture well, they got two minutes. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got two minutes to, to just keep going with meme questions. Favorite wood texture? Wood texture 274 on textures.com. Um, coffee and tea can go away. Yes, I agree. All the good questions coming out of the woodworks now. <laughs> the lead gates are open, essentially. Uh, the wood one is about food as well, if you're hungry enough. Yep. Will is a health god. Spinach or celery? Um, I mean, I don't, I, I don't like eating celery on its own, but it can definitely be like a good additive, I guess, like a flavor. What, what, what do you call it? Like a not a seasoning, but you know, it's like a, it's like a good base. It's like onions, uh, onion, celery, and uh, and uh, garlic. What came first, the fruit orange or the color orange? Um. Hmm. That's a, I'm gonna say uh the the mobile provider, the French mobile provider came first, orange. Uh favorite meme? Um <laughs> favorite meme, that is a good question. Uh I don't think I'll be I'll be able to share it uh on this on this year's stream. <laughs> Uh, donor or currywurst? Uh, donor, donor all the way. Environment <clears throat> artist. Time's right. up. Okay, I thought <laughs> I thought I thought you had an opinion on donor or currywurst. <laughs> currywurst. Why am I saying it in an English way? I don't know. <laughs> currywurst. All What's right. Your favorite. Uh, I don't I don't have a favorite. But right. anyways. I <laughs> I appreciate you being here, uh, Will. Like I I really do. Uh, this was a great session. I also yeah. appreciate like all the good questions from from like everyone in the community. Like this was this was really great. Yeah, um, it's uh, it's been awesome. So, um, I'm gonna share your work. So if people want to check out your portfolio, they can always check you out. Hey. And then, um, yeah, again. Thank you so much. And um, just just as an addition to this, um, we will be putting this on the Patreon probably. I don't know when yet, so I'll have to figure that one out. But uh, you can you can expect like a recording in like a a time soon. TBD. Yeah, but yeah, I just uh, I just want to take this time and thank everyone again. I uh, I wasn't entirely sure what to expect, um, but. Uh, you guys have really blown me away with the the amount of questions, uh, especially the ones at the end. <laughs> no, but uh, honestly, there was some really cool stuff in there that uh, that also helped me give this. Uh, I feel like uh, like get the most out of this. Um, so, thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, really, really cool back and forth we were able to have. So, uh, I hope you can take some something away with this um, from this. And uh, yeah, uh, good luck to all of you and rock on, guys. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> and I'll catch yes, you in well. the next workshop. Bye-bye. Yeah, thanks, Will. Bye-bye. Have a good one, guys. Bye. See you later.